All right, so this is a video uh, from Brittany Simon. Her and Mr. Girl had a chat. People have been asking me to like watch. Uh, I guess people want to know kind of my opinion on Mr. Girl. Also, my opinion on why the N here is capital, so that's probably a good. I don't know, man. I've seen some stuff. Uh, I think even Brittany asked me about what my opinion is. A little uncomfortable. I don't think that that's unrealistic. <laughs> so we're gonna watch this and 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 we're gonna get a we'll get a we'll get a, a better feel, you know, before we pass judgment here. Um, but let's see what we got here. I, it'll probably get pretty uh, intense. No, he's a famous BBC interviewer. Well, then I would love to talk to him. People keep trying to get me to do um, like a race realism thing. Why? Um, I think because they think that I unflinchingly will talk about like gender in a certain way. And uh, what, does that mean? Uh, what else? Black Lives Matter that I'm going to then, um, right, I gotta do this one. you know, be a race realist, okay. which is uh, which I'm not. So I think they're going to be disappointed or, or they or they want they want to watch. Hold on. I got to like look up. Yeah. I think they I think race realists believe that everybody else is lying about race. And if I they either want me to agree with them or prove that I'm a charlatan and that uh, there's a, they want to they see that there's a place I won't go, that I'm too scared to tell the truth about race. Ah. Which is, is there, that, which is that white white people are the best, I think. Is there That's a true. truth we're supposed or, or to Asian, be, or, Is there a truth I'm supposed to know about? Um, is there a truth yeah, they you have, know that other people don't know? Well, they have the races ranked by um, IQ. Hmm. Oh, yeah, okay, know. okay, okay. Race realism is uh, a person who believes the empirical evidence that supports the notion that different races are, uh, I guess, th that some races are better. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. IQ, but I'm an idiot, so that's probably why. White people for the win. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah, I mean, give everybody a test, and then whatever white people score the highest on, we say is the most important thing. I love it's... that. I love white yeah. people. You know, okay. that's fair. I don't that know if sense. I... Does well, my... I mean, if we did the test by who's better at basketball... Just kidding. <laughs> Screen, guys, hold on. I'm being, like, really... I'm trying to be, like, Mr. Girl right now. I'm trying to actually, like... I usually just have my guests be, like, really small in the corner, but I, I feel like with you and me, we could probably get side by side a little bit. I don't know. I'm a tech boomer, so everyone knows my streams are not high production. So I'm going to say that sounds Louis. good. Okay. Also, we interviewed Nick Fuentes recently. Nick really? Fuentes. That's what the chat's saying. Why? Uh, to expose it. Oh. <laughs> what are you going to expose Nick Fuentes for? I'm pretty sure he's already pretty much exposed himself. I don't know. <laughs> Nick kind of seems like a troll to me. He seems kind of harmless. Like I could beat him up. I don't know. I feel like if I could beat Definitely. you up, I can't take you that seriously. Bro, he is a troll. I remember seeing him at like uh, like the mall walking around T-posing people for Donald Trump. Like he's a tr he's definitely a troll. I think Nick Fuentes is a Nazi. I don't think he's harmless at all. Like a real Nazi? Yeah. Ooh. I think he's the real deal. How basic. Uh, uh, maybe. Well, no judgment. Have fun. No judgment about what? Me thinking that? No, him living his best life. <laughs> no judgment about him being a Nazi? I don't know. I don't really know if I believe in Nazis. Like, I think people think they're Nazis. What does she think mean that the Holocaust happened? Does she not believe in Nazis, or does she just think that the word's been thrown around so much that she doesn't believe when people call somebody a Nazi? Because those are two different things. Yes, of course. But I think those might have been real Nazis rather than what we have today, which are kind of people who wish okay. they were Nazis. Oh. Well, I think that, okay, you wishing you were a Nazi is is pretty still pretty bad you know nazis don't exist yeah it's like santa claus or um mein Kampf. those things don't exist um not a real like i understand yeah, I, they might believe they're really nazis but i'm like be okay. nazis it's not like you know it's just silly <laughs> okay uh i think i, that, I disagree uh, i guess i guess my pushback would be that i don't think um real nazis are that different from uh normal people or yeah. I think that the the difference is is that like like Nazis don't have any like form of like systemic power anymore. Um, <clears throat> so I guess that's probably where she's coming from. It's like I think that they're harmless, which I don't think that they're individually harmless. I think that the ideology is really shitty. You could make an argument that um, they're harm ha harmless or less harmful in the sense where like again they don't have the power to do much about it in some kind of like a systemic level. But okay, More people. Even. Yeah. I, I don't think there's something fundamentally different about the Nazis that right. made them you know able to do what they were, what they did. Um, no, I mean, humans are going to human, and I feel like it's a pretty human thing to do. What's that? Kill Jews? Sort of where? Host a Holocaust. Uh, I guess. That's a little bit of a cynical <laughs> That's a pretty cynical take for pretty there. Like, I understand. I think, yeah, humans will inevitably, human, they will, they will do shitty things, and that's kind of what humans do. 
But the whole point of being a human, I think, is to try to be less human, right? Or rather try to be less animalistic. Because I think that's more of like an animal trait than it is a human trait, right? Um, of like doing shitty oppressive things. Uh, it's just like a very, like, I don't know, tri like, like tribalism is a very animal um, thing to do. And so we're supposed to be trying to course correct our behavior by being less animal. So I don't think that, that brushing off bad behavior is like, ah, it's just what we do. I don't think that's a good idea, you know? Uh, hey, thank you so much for the sub, yeah. brother. Sure. Or so so it just feels like... Yeah, yeah, no, I think we're I agreeing. Think yeah. So, uh, well, we're agreeing about maybe the facts, but I don't think we're agreeing with how to talk about it. Yeah, I think that's Problem. the meme my uh, Discord has like granted me, which is I see problematic behavior and I go, oh, that's kind of funny. And then everyone else like has a whole like documentary <laughs> they want to make on it. But I just, I don't know, I'm kind of at this point where I'm like, oh, look at that. It's like a phenomenon. Does it ever feel like that to you when you're watching people? A phenomenon. No. Oh. No, no. I just so you guys know, I had to remake my balloons because I had balloons CD Plus, which is only on the iPhone. I couldn't play on the computer. So right now, these are the four towers that can turn into Paragon Towers. So I'm trying to get the XP up for that in case anybody's actually interested. Still uh, involved. A very base from Britain. Interesting. Do you feel I like. Feel, I feel deep. Mm -hmm. I feel deeply invested in my uh, my fellow man, and uh, I want just I want to stop. Is Brittany Jewish? I think no, she's not. Is she from Palestine? Is that the same thing? <laughs> I think. Well, not okay. I think she is. I don't know. Uh, you know, fascism. That's a big goal. I like fashion fa fashion a lot. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's achievable. It's it's more like I want to be on the side, of, like against fascism. Sure. Know? Doesn't I, everyone? I know, I know that it. Does, does oh, everyone no, I mean, think they are? Oh, so are you an Antifa member? Anti-fascist? Jesus. We're not one of these woke leftist liberal Antifa members. Jesus Christ. Against fascism? What's a Paragon Tower? Are you fucking serious, bro? Nah, not Richard Spencer. No, I, I kind of asked this. him and he was like... Well, hopefully I'll upgrade it on this stream and I can show you. It's fine. I just want to win. Ah, I think a lot of people feel like that. They just want to win, so they don't really care what the like result is. Here, I'll try to. I think if you ask Nick Fuentes honestly if he's against fascism, I think he would either... I, I mean, I, I, I doubt he has a problem with imposing his will on others. I think that's what he wants to oh, do. Oh, no, he doesn't. I actually remember watching something where he talks about that, and he's like, yeah, I don't, I'm don't. i fine with it. I just want it to be like my ideology is the one that I should be imposed on everybody. So what's the best Paragon? I think it's the this one, the the, the boat one. I think everyone does Explicitly. that, though. I haven't met many yeah, people who don't. Uh, well, I don't. Well, usually when I hear that, it's on a spectrum of I have an opinion, you should consider it to I will create or vote for politicians that will limit your rights because I think it's better for you. It's all the, kind of the same to me. Yeah. yeah, but like fascism is more about like uh, a single individual having that say. We're all going to have our says on what's better for the country, but that's why we live in like a democ or democratic republic, whatever, uh, so that we all have um, a say to an extent. I mean, obviously there's abuses in our system, but we all have a general say so that all of our perspectives are represented, even if it's not what we think. That's what we we live in a society full of compromise. So, yeah. What's the DJ monkey do? Uh, he gives me money. You think voting is the same as t marching people yeah, into here. a death camp at gunpoint because they're, they're not the same as you? No, this, but it's the same. It's the same. Yeah. When I say, like, people want to create legislation to, like, stop LGBT people from having rights, it's coming from yeah. the same place as the people who marched in Nazi. It's a, it started at the same place. You thinking well, you sure. have the right to limit people and dictate what their happiness and joy is. So it's all kind of the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. That to, that to me isn't fascism. I guess I'm talking about fascism strictly as like a, a form of um, authority and how power is Missing expressed us. and wielded. Mm -hmm. So the the feel somebody I don't I'm not saying he's a Nazi like he, how he feels about Jews or black people. I'm saying he's a Nazi in the sense of he, you know, if he could push a button to be like the dictator, he would. Oh, okay, interesting, cool. And um, that's Nick Fuentes. Or is are we talking about Nick? Rand? Is that a Nazi though? Does that not water down a Nazis a little bit? If I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's still bad, but you know what I mean. Like if Nazis specifically about like uh, oppression of I guess Jewish people, and like everybody's a Nazi who oppresses anybody, I feel like that waters the term down a little bit. But okay. Right now. Yeah. Okay, cool. I don't know much about him. I've only seen him in debates with Destiny, so it's not exactly a that's weird. impressive light, if that makes sense. But I believe you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How I mean, are you today, by the way? Question. Uh, I'm okay. What an interesting okay? start. Just okay. Yeah. What does that mean in Max World? Um, <laughs> a very interesting start here. It means uh, I don't like the question. How are you? Okay. I usually oh, why? Dodge. But it's too late. You didn't dodge it. You already told me you're okay. That is a dodge. Why does mm. it, why this does not mean anything? Okay. I mean, the question "How are you?" In my experience, uh, nobody gives a shit about how are you. Right, so when I have a conversation with somebody, it's like, hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You don't tell me you're not good. Okay, I don't care. 
It's usually just like a pretty, it's just like a formality. It's like, hey, what's up? Hey, nothing. Okay, cool. But don't like, if I'm like, hey, how are you? And you're like, well, my, my pet just died. I don't care. I never cared. I, you're supposed to know that this is just like a, this is just a standard greeting. You know? Hey, how you doing? Hey, how are you? That's how it usually it goes. Don't even answer it, to be honest with you. Hey, how are you? How, how are you? Uh, that's it. I don't want an answer. You know? That's how you're supposed to respond to these types of things in real life. Okay? Um, well, I actually emailed uh, you to ask you onto my show, but I'm on your show at the same time. So how do you want to do this? Oh, however you want. If you want me to be on your show, that's fine. I think we're both on each other's show. <laughs> what is happening okay. here? If you want to call this a show. I don't know what it is. We didn't even it's do introductions. It's hardly a show. Okay. Yeah, you know, well, I think I think both audiences know who the other person is at this point, right? Yeah. Hopefully. If not, this is Mr. Girl. This is Max. And I'm a Brittany. This is Brittany Simon. Yeah. Hi. Um, yeah, so, well. <laughs> this is so awkward. <laughs> um, I, I messaged you yesterday. And I was like, hey, you were like talking a lot of shit about me a few months ago, saying that I'm boring or that I'm not introspective or that I think my uh, inner monologue is objective. All these things you were saying about me. <laughs> that was she really? Holy shit. <laughs> I just so funny. I don't know why I just that cracking me up. It's so nonchalant the way he said it, but also like kind of like very stern and very serious at the same time. I think it's funny when people talk shit about me. Um, I think mostly in January. Yeah. I yes, I can get the banana, but I don't need more XP on the banana monkey. Okay, I'll explain this really quickly. The way that experience gains work in Balloon CD six, it, I don't think it has anything to do with popping power. It has everything to do with uh, the what towers you have down and how much money you've invested into it proportionately. So if I have uh, ten thousand, uh, you know, or nine thousand gold worth of monkey to like ninja towers and a thousand worth of, of, of dart monkey towers, I'm gonna get ninety percent of the uh, allocated XP from every round is going to go to the one with 90% of the money cost. I don't need to really upgrade this anymore because I only go through this path thing and I'm trying to build the XP of all my other things so I can get a Paragon. So I, can, I need 500,000 XP. I only have 184, but that's why. Yeah. Maybe a little trickle into February. And uh, I, I figured, like, most people don't like me the first time and they I have these um, for money, watch so. anything, watch my content or any, any conversation I'm in. So I figured that might have changed. So I wanted to ask you beforehand so, so I don't come in uh, guns blazing. Um... If that has changed, and you said yes, but it seemed like we were gonna wait until we we're talking to discuss it more. Yeah, just yeah. Right um, news, just to, to get a sense of where we're starting out at. Yeah. Well, I have a question. Why would you have come in guns blazing, even if I did think those things very strongly the same? Because they're not true, and it pisses me off when people think those things. What things? Okay. So you don't think your belief systems are objective? You think they're subjective? Yes. Okay. Cool. Well, most so you don't think like. Okay, so when you push your ideas forward, you're pushing them with the understanding that they're subjective. Yeah, I, I try to couch my beliefs in like, this is what I like. This is what well, I think everybody's feelings are subjective. We just understand that it's a, like some things are just bad. Like murder, right? Because we shouldn't murder each other or you could die. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah. No, it doesn't even work for me. It's just what I do. Like, this is how I think of myself. And the way I think listen, is like stop, stop looking. Listen, stop talking to me about. I just had to restart this game. Stop, te stop telling me that I'm a noob. Okay, I just restarted. My preference above, uh, you know, whatever else. If I'm disagreeing with something, it's not. It's not. It's more like a lens. I think I try to present my views as a lens you could look through. If it's helpful to you to look through it, mm -hmm. fine. Uh, I'm not trying to get you to glue it to your face though. Um, which I think that when you do that, then it gets into more objective. Okay. Did you watch my videos on the levels? Yeah. Do you think that I'm a black and white thinker that thinks she is the objective truth for people? I think she might I mean, have told you, me. Yeah, I think she might have said that to me that she is kind of like that. I some degree. I, I, I know that you have some. I mean, you ended the video with like, I'm just an idiot. So I know that you um, don't like fully feel that way. But you are presenting a pretty rigid value system of like good versus bad. You also said they're not a judgment, a judgment, but they kind of are. Gay judgment. Um, we gay judge here. Yeah. So my so assessment of you. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. So to, so I I do think your value system is a bit um, rigid. You do you do do like a take it or leave it thing. Um, okay. But it does come across like you just think you're right, and you and obviously you've constructed a level system, level one, two, three, four, five, with yourself as a five. So there's that, and I I think that uh, it's for anybody who's not familiar, your level system. I'd give myself a ten, because I'm just sexy. 
is basically levels of introspection. Mm -hmm. So one are useless people who are a burden and drain on society and the world around them. No, I don't think that she doesn't like gays. I think that she's just like a little, like she like, I don't know, likes gay stuff kind of a thing. It's like, oh, gay, you know, like you ever meet a woman that just think that's their little bit of their identity is having gay friends. I think that's more what it is. I'm not hundred percent sure, but uh, I don't think that that she's homophobic. I talked to her before. She's not like a bad person themselves, which is Mm. poetic, right? It's one of the cleverest things I've ever said. Yeah, that, that, I find that pretty disturbing. Uh, so I'm probably going <laughs> to sure. argue with you about that. Two, it sounds like are like normal people who are uh, st- um, kind of stupid, but they're happy. And you know, we need twos to like, you know, take be like garbage people or whatever. No, twos can be very then, smart too, obviously. Like they- yeah, they're smart, but they're, they're, choosing, they're choosing to um, live in the moment and not understand their place in society and have little cosmic understanding or historical understanding or philosophical understanding of and what's going on around them. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, <laughs> that's not true but i like so you say that but clearly it's like two it's not you know two is less than five okay just, but okay but okay even the levels even the, the reason, levels okay, numbers, listen, listen, think, the only reason they're numbers is literally because my co-author is like let's name them really cool names i was like i will forget them let's do one two three four five i'm an idiot that's fine but in, in making that decision you you clearly are putting two below five literally threes are a, above twos but they're not quite about. fours so threes are uh, stuck in limbo. No, they're uncomfortable. Guys, they're on the edge, and it's a very dangerous place to be a three because you might go insane and kill yourself. There's like uh, there's like allusions <laughs> to suicide at every level. <laughs> did you take so, Max? This is the best. Like I love your. Did you you really watch the video? I'm I am in love with this. This yeah. is so nice. <laughs> uh, watch the video. Uh, and then four a four <laughs> is basically serious. almost a five, but a four so a four has has ascended. I don't think I've ever seen a conversation with Mister because I've watched a little bit here and there, nothing like too too crazy. But I don't think I've ever seen him uh, have fun. I think that's uh, I think that's that's the one thing I've never seen Mr. Girl have any fun. That's so sad. And and understands their place, but they're still yeah. She's like a philosophical system for rating people or something. I think yeah. I don't I don't know exactly what they're talking about, but I'm constantly losing it. Kind of like on a on a on a, some kind of fence. Um, but you could I think a four can be like fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm working with some fours right now to see what will happen. All of them end up asking me how to be a five, which is funny to me because I can't. It's not like I can write a book, so it's always like a personal journey. But that's but we're waiting to see. I know if Brittany was a guru. Contentful. The way they can't content to a two is much easier to be than a four. A two is very easy, okay. like in comparison. Well, it sounds like what you're saying is dumb people are. It's easier to be dumb, which is true, man. Life is a lot less stressful when you're fucking stupid, and you don't have like a really good understanding of the world. It's just less stressful, bro. Person. And then a five, a five exception. All right. So apparently, one are useless people. Twos are regular people. Threes and fours and fives are like on an enlightenment journey. Oh, okay. Well, that's something. Accepts history. Accepts the universe. A five knows the truth the truth which cannot be told in a video or a book but the truth can only be yeah. told can only be told in <laughs> uh, a number of paid se- sessions with Brittany Simon not even you could even- <laughs> I mean this I, I mean it sounds a little guruish sounds a little bit guruish a little sussy but okay. <laughs> you can even watch the YouTube videos and get there you don't have to pay for the sessions but that's the thing right it's like you don't have to pay for the sessions um okay. but yeah that's a really wow I <laughs> I'm so in love with this moment. This is so. That was a great summary. That was great. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, that was. That I just want to make awesome. sure we're on the same page then. Yeah. Okay. And let me tell you, since we're like, I'll gush about your work for a second. Now that you just gushed about mine, but I'm gonna, as a narcissist, take that as you gushing <laughs> was I, about my was work. I you were gushing okay. about my work because you actually paid attention I, to it. So oh I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take that as a compliment. Okay. So with your work, because a narcissist Ghost. just likes attention, whether it's positive or negative. That's what you're saying. I mean, we are YouTubers, are we not narcissists? No, we are. I'm just, I'm just clarifying. That's why you said yes. that. Like the way Trump, Trump just likes. He just wants you to write a news article about him. It doesn't matter what's in it. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I will say I okay. do prefer people who seem to be critical of my work, and you, you're already like giving me that energy of like oh, he might tear yeah. me apart, which you know is a kink of mine. Like tear me apart, please. Like I'll get excited. Yeah. Jesus you know. Christ. Um. So when I saw <laughs> yeah. your work in January, I was really annoyed with. Does she really believe that, or do, or do you think that she's just used to it? So now she's saying she likes it as like a way to pretend that she enjoys the criticism. Or maybe she just likes criticism to have conversation. I don't know. That because people were like, Brittany, he's the next thing for you. You're going to love talking to him. And I was like, oh, I don't. Okay. And then I watched it and I didn't, as you saw, quite feel connected to your work. And then mm-hmm. I saw the video you did called, I think it's called Chasing Women. Mm-hmm. And it really changed how I saw you. And so I went, oh, and my brain went ding, 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 ding. And I was like, oh, I know where to put Max. So I do like categorizing people. And I okay, think I miscategorized you the first time I saw you. I know I, I think I, well, I don't know yet because I haven't talked to you, but I'm, I want to bet that I did. And therefore, I get the exciting moment of like, Ooh, maybe I did it wrong, which means I can do it right this time. And that's my happiness. That's my happy place. Okay. Because so. you thought I was a two, but actually I'm a six. Ooh, um, <laughs> okay. so, something like that. Sure, something like that. Something changed. And there's something that means that there's more interesting things here for me. And I'm so I'm being a little selfish. I hope this is a symbiotic relationship where we both get something out of this. For sure. Sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. yeah. Um, I wonder if I can push buttons and do stuff. 
Uh, yeah, so uh, my a lot of people are predicting that I'm going to yell at you or make you cry, but it, you did disclose to me that um, me yelling at you would be arousing to you. Oh, 100%. I even wore underwear for this. I was going commando all day, but now I'm in underwear, so. <laughs> what Gotta the protect fuck? your seating. Yeah, well, I'm in yellow pants. You know what's interesting, and I'm actually really happy about this. Like, when I chatted with Brittany, because um, she chats in a very flirtatious way. She didn't flirt with me. And maybe it's just because I'm fat and ugly, but I, I was, I think it's more because I'm married and I'm very happy that we, I'm very happy that we didn't have any flirt because the flirt taste of energy doesn't necessarily mean that anybody's attracted to each other, but I'm like happy for that because like, that's a, that's a thing with my wife and I is like a, you know, my wife likes Brittany. She, she enjoyed the conversation we had, but if Brittany didn't respect that like marital boundary and flirted with me, then uh, she wouldn't have liked her. You know what I mean? So I, I, I just I appreciate that. And so oh, I, just, okay. I don't want them to soak through and then be rude for the internet oh to see. God. <laughs> understood yeah i try to be considerate uh, so, right so well i don't know if that's true but uh so that that complicates uh any i mean if, if i get if i if i, I lose either way now because like if i if, if i fight back and i get angry then you win if i tear you apart you win if i win you win if i lose you win if i'm nice and compliment you you win yeah isn't that good though is somebody supposed to lose right now i hope you win at the end of this too i don't know well, yeah. So the way it's set up, you're gonna win, and maybe I'll win too. I guess that's that's how you have it. Yeah. Well, okay. do you think that fives always win? I don't believe in your level system, Brittany. Mm, you do a little. Just a little. Uh, I don't think so. Just a little. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think of. I don't think I think of people that way. Um, I need more ninja monkeys. You don't think that's people are I differently think. introspective, or introspectively different? I think some people are more introspective about certain things at certain times mm. and in certain ways. But I, I think there's so much variance. Like, um, uh, I mean, like, like Steven, there we go. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally extremely introspective, mm -hmm. occasionally not introspective. Mm -hmm. um, I think he was like a carpet cleaner before streaming was invented. Mm -hmm. If streaming had never been invented. By the way. Um, if you know who invented streaming, probably Christian. It had never been a way for him to like, like. I mean, I mean, he, I mean, he basically invented streaming. But if the technology hadn't been there for him to merge the oh, the, the idea of talking about ideas true. and playing video games at the same time, I lose. Uh, he might have just been a Not carpet good. cleaner who played video games and had like some interesting conversations with his friends. But in your assessment of him, like from afar, you might have just said, "Well, he cleans carpets. He's a two, and he's happy doing that." Fives can clean carpets. So I understand what you're sure, saying. But, like his life could have gone in a specific direction. Well, yeah. Like, I mean, I, I used to be, I would consider myself like pretty smart uh, for the friend group that I had um, before I, you know, became like a social media person. But then once you kind of sit in the field for a while and you like, you do a lot of conversations and you educate yourself on things like, yeah, you get smarter. I think that everybody has the capacity to become more intelligent. Um, but yeah, I guess you would, it depends on their life route. Maybe. Maybe. I think certain just, people are saying, destined for certain things, but not really. Cause yeah, I, you know. but other than other times I'm talking to him and I'm like, uh, I'll say like, oh, so I, I think you're, you've, you must feel X, Y, Z about, you know, something that I, that you obviously feel like, I know what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. I know what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's like, no, that's completely wrong. And I'm like, you, I'm like, I, I can't, I don't believe you. Mm. Yeah. And so, and so in some ways, uh, I, he's not introspective in some ways he's extremely introspective. And I think, I think he thinks the same thing about me. And I think you think the same thing about me. I just, I just don't, I just think we're, I mean, this conversation is interesting. It's just like, bro, I, um, sometimes like, why do you want to be introspective? Like, yeah, of course we, I sit down and I, I analyze myself and you know, my interactions and whatnot, but sometimes like who gives a fuck, you know what I mean? Sometimes you just want to sit down and you want to just fart and poop. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to have to always uh, give your, give the most, uh, in-depth understandings of everything sometimes you just want to be a person like sometimes i watch a video and we'll have like a really nice educated conversation on it and sometimes I watch a video and i make fart noises you know what i mean like sometimes you just got to turn your brain off <laughs> honestly or, or like if, if we accept your level system i think at sometimes i'm a one and sometimes i'm a five and it just depends mm. so I, I guess i just think it's it's too simplifying to say that someone can have that label all the time i just think it's a it's a moving target Oh, I've heard this often where people go, can I go from one to the other? I, I think in, in ways, in a, like a metaphysical way, but not like in a literal way. Because once you know something, you cannot know it unless you have like brain damage. But I can't not know things once I know it. I can you forget I mean? things. I that's true. Brittany. Mm. I, I, have, I have met many people who 
um, seemed to know something at one point, and then, okay, like it, like it just disappeared. For sure. But do they know it? Are you looking at your chat? They knew it? Uh, no, it's currently minimized. Should I? That's I think how you prefer it, correct? Or should I bring it up? It's up to you. No, um, no. I can't. I'm gonna hide mine. I just noticed that they're asking who you are again. So I just want to say one more time. This is Brittany Simon, and when we we're talking about these number levels, we're talking about her belief system called the levels that she invented along with an mm -hmm. anonymous person. Um, and uh, they're basically levels of introspectiveness and acceptance of kind of reality and your place in uh, it. I'm gonna do that uh, mm -hmm. a, a widening of perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, like, yeah, that's pretty good. So I, I agree that stuff. you can watch people. Like I say, oh, I'm in a two moment right now, everybody. I'm having like a two moment. So here's my two moment opinion. And then go, here's my like five moment opinion. So I kind of play that game. But realistically, even when I'm in my feelings, real there's always a logical end that I default to, which is like my five brain. To say, Brittany, you've already done this work. You've already gone through these crises. You've already met these people in these bubbles. That everyone fits exactly where you've categorized them. Even when you want to argue that they are what they are, and you can't make them anything different. So I do it as a comforting thing to myself, which is like categorizing how I've experienced why people make decisions why like it always confuses me sometimes when people i admire do certain things i'm like what do you do that for and they're like oh because of this i'm like oh we're all just people huh we had this discussion in my discord yesterday where i think everyone's kind of basic and someone's like queen you're not basic i was like i'm basic bitch come on like when the internet's not happening i go home to a pretty basic life and it's pretty good it's pretty peak right so like the levels isn't meant to judge people truly it's meant to just say hey if you find yourself questioning and wondering is there more than just like this sjw bubble or this youtube bubble like yeah bro there's a whole world out there and you don't have to assume that we found the answers in these bubbles because the answers are limited how many times are we going to have the same conversations? I said it today on my stream this morning. We're still debating what's a man and what's a woman. At what point are humans going to accept that we've discovered things? Or are we just going to always continually go through these cycles of questioning, like, what is? And if that's the case, then it makes sense. We are giving birth new, to new babies every day. And new babies are born twos. And twos have to go on their journey of introspection and fall in love. Why aren't babies born once? The fuck? Babies are dumb as shit. And they're assholes. Babies are fucking pieces of shit. And they're useless. You know, you leave a baby outside and it just dies. You know, like, what a loser. That's a one. There's no way. I don't even know what a one exactly is, but there's no way a baby's a two. Babies are stupid. And then, okay. you know, maybe go to jail or be a politician. Wait, what do, you th what do you think a woman is? I'm a woman. Uh, chromosomes are a woman. That's good enough for me. I'm pretty simple. Uh, secondary okay, so sex X, characteristics. X. Yeah, like I'm pretty content with but. the the way we fundamentally categorize men and women. I think it's pretty reasonable, even on site alone. We're obviously like different just looking at us. It's kind of fun to look at us actually side by side. Okay, so do you think trans women are women? Um, in one way, yes. Well, you just said XX. Well, I think they're women, right? In the way that... Well, they don't have women chromosomes and they don't have right. female so they're sex not characteristics. Cis, right, they're not cis women. So they're people who identify as women and I'm, that's good enough for me too. I'm pretty Okay, easy. so they're not women but they think they are. Yeah. Or they say they are. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, it's interesting because, like, I understand what she's saying. Like, listen, obviously, if you accept trans women as women, which I do, they are different from cis women, of course. You change the definition of a woman a little bit. Um, and I guess you could really, I guess for me, um, if you pressed me, I'd say, like, a woman is somebody who legitimately feels they're a woman and does their best to express themselves as a woman in society. And obviously, the way you express would be different from, like, you know, society to society. Um that's kind of how I would define a woman more than anything else, you know? Sometimes it doesn't necessarily matter. What's interesting, though, is that it's like this is something uh, that's interesting to me, at least, is that effectively what she said is she doesn't really think that trans women are necessarily women. And a lot of people probably get really upset with that. But what's so interesting is that, like, in the real world, if we remove ourselves from YouTube world, that's a perspective that she would never say to a trans person. Unless you're specifically talking about trans people, right? Like, if you believe that, if you don't think trans women are women, but like when you see a trans woman, you call them a girl and you just whatever, that's like internally, like, yeah, you, you have transphobic ideologies, but externally, you're not being disrespectful. And I think that that respect level matters more. Like, you don't always have to understand everything um, in its entirety in order for you to be like respectful of a person's particular like belief system or ideology or, or, or gender. Uh, um, identity and whatnot. So, and that's good enough for me. What does that mean? Mm, I don't. I think people hear me say that and they go, "Oh, so Brittany doesn't believe in trans people?" It's not really like that, though. I meet a lot of really cool trans people. They're obviously like men and women. Well, you believe in trans people, but you don't believe what they're saying. Um, I believe them. You don't agree with what? Mm, it's not even that, really, because I feel like not to be so woo woo, but I I meet trans people all the time. I'm like, I get it. I get how you're not cis, but I also get how you're cis and not cis. Like, I get how they're men and women, but also don't live as men and women. If that makes sense. Like, I understand from an energy, like a feeling perspective of like, yeah, like you can be anything but this, even though you're not, but you are. Okay. okay. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, your level system is also a business. Yes. That should be acknowledged. Yeah, it became a business after a while. I went to a priest and I said, hey, I'm doing these calls with people, but it's not formulated and I don't know what to do. And he's like, well, don't you have like this whole level system? I was like, yeah. And he's like, so be a professional conversationalist. Use the levels to talk to people. It brings people in and you should just talk to people. I, and talk I to guess people. Brittany is like a guru. Brittany is like a, a guru. Okay. This day he said that people would just talk to people for a living. I was like, great. So I branded myself a professional conversationalist and listener. It made people feel safer with me because I knew what I was aiming for. And so sometimes- Safer than what? Um, then like a, just like a, um, like I, I don't want to be a scammer, so I don't want to like take people's money just to take it. Um, and then I, I, I do give me I'm your money like, and get nothing in return, bitch. <laughs> some loon. High the value. The woman, He's like, yeah, third exactly. is flat. You know, I have a reason to believe the things that I do or slash help people, but I think I meant to only yeah. impact a niche community of humans. Mostly people who are probably more similarly brained to myself. Generally okay. speaking. Yeah, so I do calls, but all the calls are out. Some of the calls don't even involve the level. Some people just call me to play like video games or watch anime and get high with them. So we just do what. It sounds like Brittany. That there's a there's a service to do that, like a street, like a weird service to play like League of Legends with people. How interesting is that? Whatever, it's whatever the person wants. They get to decide how the calls go. Um, there's also a sexual element to something. My OnlyFans, you mean? I don't know. Yeah, I have a <laughs> What an that's awkward way to bring that up. Presentation. I mean, you, you, you've been a pretty aggressively sexual in this conversation. And then you're, yeah, OnlyFans. Yeah, well, I'm uh, a... I assume, <laughs> go ahead. I assume some of the motivation for the private calls is coming from a sexual place. No, the private calls... So, no, no, no. You'll get really? banned if you get sexual. You'll get banned. Well, even if you get sexual, that doesn't mean that, that it's not part of the motivation. From whose perspective? Well, who cares? It doesn't really matter. I mean, like what he's basically arguing is that some people might pay her money to spend time with her because they're sexually attracted to her and hope that they can fuck her in some capacity. I mean, that's kind of irrelevant. I mean, good for her for having that display, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, who really gives a shit? Um, I don't think that really necessarily matters. The clients, you mean? The customers? Or the patrons? I don't know. Um, Either one. Well, okay, so yeah. I separate my energy, so I tell them if you come to Patreon. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, okay, I know, okay, but you okay, could be okay. a porn star. You could be a porn star and be like, I have totally non sexual non sexual service where like we can but just it play is. checkers. So, but it yeah. is. So, yeah. So, yes. So, you can look at it like that, but I'm, I've been in sex positive circles my whole life. I'm a queer woman. Like, I protested naked. I've run around naked around like the streets of okay. Seattle as like a form of like pro nudity. So, people who are. Where do you often, live? I don't share where I live. Where do you live? coming over <laughs> what a jarring question <laughs> uh, america. what do you share about where you, i live in america a, you know, i live uh you know, texas or west <laughs> is what i tell people because okay. i ain't doing the cold okay. except okay. i yeah yeah uh, do I want to... yeah um but like you're you, you, the insinuation i understand so certain bubbles will see me different ways but people come to me through the one-on-one -on -one calls like you're coming for something other than sexual oh, gratification and even only fans like i don't create content for people to masturbate to if they do that's great i don't care but i create content that i think is pretty and that i like and i've noticed that my work is not what you would call traditional sex work it's much more i think like i call it queer in, in nature so um it might not be what people are looking for like i'll just like fold my laundry naked or sometimes i'll dance sometimes i'll masturbate sometimes i won't like sometimes i'll just talk to people at camera angles okay. i just i like being naked and i think being naked is awesome and so i kind of have that energy that there sounds like okay you're a fucking liar no i'm just kidding <laughs> uh, that sounds like it sounds like sex work it is sex work i think so okay. i think you can so categorize you, it as so sex work it? yeah so that's sex work I just hear complaints and sometimes what's... where people will come to me and they're like, you don't make good sex work because I couldn't masturbate to this. I'm like, oh, sorry, but like, I don't make it for people in mind that way. I don't I don't even make YouTube with people in mind that way. I just make it because I like it. So if I want to. Why you know everything I make is designed to be masturbated to. I believe that. Incredible. The way you sit on your bed, your thighs peak. You got great thighs. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. What about you, though? I watched your uh, documentary last night. Not quite a porno, but kind of, but more of a documentary. I liked the feel. Okay. Yeah, I made a pornographic masturbation documentary. Wow. Was that your first time being um, naked on the internet? No. Was that your first time masturbating on the internet? <sighs> no, I don't think so. It's my first time masturbating. Uh, Mine I, too. I was in a couple porn movies. Um, so definitely masturbated on, and and like art movies. I was in. Oh, cool. I've been I've been I've been in I've been filmed masturbating or naked or photographed masturbating a number of times. I don't know where all those things were destined to end up, so I don't know how much of it's like on the internet. Um, okay. This is definitely the most high profile. There is a leaked picture of my penis on the internet, so I guess I I, I get that. Well, first time that's the first time I posted myself masturbating on Facebook. <laughs> you posted it on Facebook. I posted a link to it on Facebook. Yeah. Did you get banned? Why? No, I think you can post links to porn on Facebook. Oh, great. Okay. What did you? Know. Why did you yeah, do it? What was the motivation? Um, I actually made a video called "Why I Made a, Why Did I Make a Porn Movie," but mm -hmm. uh, 
that we'll go into this in more detail, but for a few reasons. One, I, I was feeling uh, exhibitionistic and I thought it would be, it would be enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Two, um, I wanted to um, kind of ex uh, explore the idea that um, we all masturbate to porn, mm -hmm. and yet it is seen as a very lowly thing to create. And I think there's a lot of hypo hypocrisy and like sex negativity around um, consuming and relying on the naked bodies of others while also looking down your nose and saying that these people are disgusting degenerates for making the content that you that you like need. Totally. I agree. Yeah, I think so too. I will say I'm very selfish in my work, meaning like I really do do it because I love it too. Did you do it at any, in any way because you loved it? Like the feeling of it or the look of it? Um, yeah, I probably have more mixed feelings about it. Uh, I feel like I, I enjoy being exposed, but it also feels kind of like bad. This conversation makes me want to get taquitos from 7-Eleven. Mm, in what um, way? I don't know. It's just like violating or exposing or embarrassing. And like that just like kind of adds to the thrill of it, but it also is just sort of unpleasant at the same time. But I, I think that um, I think porn should have more conflict in it. And so that's another thing I wanted to do is like, I feel like most masturbation porn is like, oh, look at my nice hotel room and I feel good in it and I'm having a good day. Ooh, gosh, this feels so good and everything's fine. Oh. And it's like that. I, I really don't like that. I've, um, that's not been my experience with sex in real life. Uh, it's not been my experience with any any woman I've known and their master relationship with masturbation has not been this like completely easy, fun, free thing that just makes them feel good and nothing else. And it's just it's just weird to me that um, in most most porn does not expose people; it conceals them and just gives you like a new like exposes their bodies. Right. But that's that's very that's just part of what is like arousing about porn. And I think some of the most successful porn actors um bring bring more of their personality to their work. Okay. So I was interested in exploring that, but I wouldn't say it was like, uh, I mean, I, I didn't, I've, I've only, I've only posted twice on Pornhub. I, I think I am, um, I am filming a pornographic version of my real doll review mm. and I, I might, I might post it. Uh, I don't know. It's well, I've got to talk to Jamie, but, uh, and then I got to see what, what I think of it. Why don't you do an OnlyFans? Do you have one? You said that he wants to make a, a porn video set in World War II. Does he actually do that? Did I miss something in this conversation? Um, I mean, that's interesting. It's very <laughs> interesting. What what is a real doll? Um, is this a real thing? Um. Okay. Oh. Oh. It's a. I think it's a sex doll. Oh. Okay. Let's see. Let's browse them all real quick. Wow, incredible. Wow, $7,000? Jesus, no thanks. Because um, I don't... No, I don't have one. Uh, I don't want to Why? be a sex worker. Oh. I think the... Um, better. I am beyond what I already am. I, I think filming yourself jacking off can be fun. Having to film yourself jacking off in order to pay the rent sounds like a level of coerciveness that I would be very, very uncomfortable with. Um, yeah. I'm, That's I, fair. I mean, I've, okay. I've, done, I've done some sex work. I wasn't reliant on it, but once the money gets involved, it gets uh, gets we'll pretty confusing for me from like a consent perspective. Well, if I may push back a little bit on why, that. Why I'd... does it get confusing from a consent perspective? Like I understand the idea of not wanting to do sex work because then you have to do sex work all the time. And it, it, it's, it's a yucky feeling to always like we want to do that. I get that. But why? Like, why does that make consent confusing? I wonder why just to share how I do it. But like everyone knows on my OnlyFans, like there are some months when I will post twice a week or twice a month or whatever I feel like because I refuse to make content when I don't want to, especially not naked content. But I don't, like I don't, that's what I mean to say. When you sign up for my OnlyFans, you are not getting a person who thinks, oh my, my customer is going to be upset with me. No, I think you're- That makes sense. But most people kind of get like put into that hole. Like if you're going to do OnlyFans, like that's going to be your job. And if you want to be successful, you got to keep doing it. So it's like, a, it's, a, it's a yucky, I guess that's where he would say the consent gets a little- uh, sussy, <laughs> uh, a little bit confusing, I suppose. Um, but yeah, most people don't have that like particular feeling about it. You're getting a random like erotic artist brain who's like, today I will film my. Hey, thanks for the sub, but brother. like, it's not. It's Kate not. It's, only, it's at the Just whim of my artistry, not at the whim months. of the customer. So like, don't you think you could find uh, that balance? No, because oh. money, money makes it so that it is at the whim of money. Why I make money? Same with streaming, care. like. I don't get it. You don't I, care because you because you make you're making enough money, but if you start to not make enough money, or yeah. it turns out that you, I mean, it's I don't think you can know how you are feeling about something when you are being paid to do it. Same thing what? with streaming. Like, um, how much would I stream if it was purely just for fun? 
like organically, I probably stream a lot less. Hmm. And I, I, it is fun, but I don't know how fun it is because mm -hmm. it's also paying my bills. And so now I have to stream. Oh, okay. Uh, and even if I don't want to, and I and, and I don't exactly even know when I want to. Now it's just like I I know I just show up and do it because it's my job. Okay. And I mean, it's a job I like, but but it's okay for me to be kind of confused and to have a fraught. I'm not understanding exactly what he's like. I get what he's saying is that like once it becomes a job, you have like I have to stream. I tend to do fun. I mean, I'm lucky. I this I do fun stuff on my stream. I just talk about stuff now. I, I, at one point, I was playing games and stuff, and I wasn't like super enjoying that. Um, but I'm just kind of like confused. Like we're talking about where it starts and ends, and what is and isn't fun. Like I know what is and is not fun. A fi having a financial factor to me makes things fun. I I, I enjoy you know I enjoy I enjoyed working my job. I didn't like love my job. I actually liked my job. I hated my management and my last uh, thing. I like my job, but um, the money was a factor is why I liked it. You know, money's always going to be a factor. Why is that? It's in everything. I think you could still understand what you do and don't enjoy about it because there's a factor of being able to support yourself. It's a weird relationship with streaming because um, uh, I only do it a few hours a week. I mean, like eight to 12 hours a week or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not penetrating my body. If I was sticking a dildo in my ass eight okay. to twelve hours a week, True. and that was paying my bills, who the fuck then, does that for eight to twelve hours a week though? Sticking a dildo in your ass though, I feel like people who do porn don't. I don't think that people who do like OnlyFans, I mean, maybe porn is different. I don't know, but that stick them in, in the butt twelve hours a week. I think it's more that like they have to get to the position where they're going to stick something in their butt that where it gets like a little bit mentally like distressing. I guess for lack of a better term, um, more than anything else. Like it's not super strenuous to be do like only fans like you're an attractive person but it gets frustrating when you have to continuously keep up with it because you have to put yourself in the mindset and etc cetera, etc cetera. um you know cam girls do it do they really oh maybe i just don't know about it um hmm. then like the question 18 of like, hours like cam girls work 12, eight i feel like they work like an hour or two a day though you really 18 i feel like that's wrong maybe i'm wrong but in my butt like oh i don't really know but i'm gonna do it anyway that's a that's a much more to me feels like much murkier water to be sure. dragging yourself into. Okay, Not I feel the that. streaming itself. I think the streaming or streaming is already bad for you enough. It's like it's like um it's like parasocial sex work. So Totally. No, no, I feel yeah. that. I feel that. Okay, wait a second because this is interesting cuz I guess I would say, I, well, hmm, this is so funny. I remember there was a time when I wasn't, my grandfathers had both died and then I was sick and then I was just not feeling up to it. So I hit up OnlyFans and I was like, hey guys, no offense. Like I cannot feel sexy right now. Like I'm not going to force myself to feel sexy to post. Like I'm just going through it. I, just, I feel like we, we're really thrown around the word parasocial. I just don't understand. Cause like parasocial, I understand is like the relationship between people uh, who don't really know each other. if like in a celebrity capacity, like it, like a parasocial relationship isn't like an inherently bad thing. It's when it gets to a point where it crosses like a particular boundary or somebody's taking advantage of somebody, right? So like, why does it necessarily, why why does everything need to be like such a loaded, like loaded language term, like parasocial? It's like up there with like grooming now. Everything's parasocial. Like you guys knowing me, but not knowing me doesn't make this like a weird situation. Like I interact with people and stuff, but like, you know that like we're not friends. Fucking bitch, no. But you, you know what I mean? But like we 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 do our thing. We enjoy each other's company um, in different ways, obviously. <clears throat> but why does it have to be I just feel like the stank that we put on parasocial is just a weird it's like a weird thing. And so for like a month, like they just let me off the hook basically because no, they understood. Fuck you, bitch. And I think I have the luxury of having such a good audience that they don't make me feel obligated to post. But also I, I have a Papa gut body pillow that I smooch every night. Is that parasocial? No, I don't think that's just normal. It's normal human behavior. Make it clear that I just won't. Like I'll, I'd rather just not pay bills. Like you know what I mean? But you're right that I'm at also a position where I have a savings. So I do have the luxury of not worrying about it. Um, I'm also a person who used to post nude for free and I still do. Like I just don't care that there's like I don't. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I, if, I, I, I post it one because I love it. But two. I, you're right that the job element is, is there. So like I think about like for my birthday, I have this whole shoot planned. So you, those things all exist at once, right? Like that turmoil between us. But like you as a Max, like you, how does Max feel about it? Like does Max have any issues or is Max only reacting to his life? And so do you feel like you're pulled by that? Or do you feel like you can get a hold of it and pull the, pull the balance between the money and the performance and your dignity? And no, I don't. I don't think there is a balance. I think that's mean? why I'm telling I'm... you I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah, I don't believe you. Well, what? in what way do I have to qualify? I don't understand. I feel like I'm... It's, it's, <laughs> I just feel like I think, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't. I don't. So this is one difference in how we think. I am not going to stamp something with. I have found balance. 
Why? Or I know how I feel about this. To me, the door is always open. And uh, that and like that's why when you say how are you, I don't have an answer because I don't know, and I know that I don't know. And you so, don't know how and that, what the fuck is going on here? We say are we just, are we're just talking about finding a balance between like work and pleasure and going across your own boundaries. Why can't you know that? This seems like a, it seems like you're a, in a continuous existential crisis. I don't understand. Presence. <laughs> It's exhausting to do it constantly, but do you not know how to do it temporarily, like for a second, like live in the pr- like live in the I'm moment. saying that you don't know something. I'm saying I'm, I'm saying I am better than you, and I'm explaining how. Okay. The way that I'm better than you is that you label things with a sense of surety <laughs> about this is in the good pile and this is in the bad pile, and if the good and bad aren't enough, we'll just do one through five. So that's that's we're gonna have some nuance here. We're gonna have five things instead of two things. I'm saying that when you say yeah, but did you love it? I'm like, there's not an answer. I don't have an answer for that. I can tell you some of my feelings about it, but another, but What's at happening? the same time, I know that I have a big blind spot. Money is blinding. So mm-hmm. I, the more money I make, the less I know how I feel about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I just disagree. Why is money like this magical non-factor? To him? It's a factor. Being able, like money fundamentally is just your ability to exist uh, for the most part. Like if you really wanted to, you can go live in the woods and hunt or something and just, you know, stay there if you want. But like money is a factor. It's it's a way for us to work. And I mean, if you contribute to society to an extent, uh, of course it's a factor. Like I don't understand. I'm just, it's very confusing because you're removing a fundamental aspect of life, which is literally the ability to live through money and saying, well, if I didn't make money doing this, would I really like it? Well, I don't know. Maybe like if money didn't exist, I don't know. <laughs> like that's, that's, we're getting into like a really uh, philosophical conversation that I think is generally unnecessary. Like, yeah, we could ponder a, a world where money doesn't exist and that could be really interesting, but like, does it really matter? Cause it does exist. It's a factor, and obviously having more money like makes me more comfortable, and I enjoy that, and it makes me enjoy doing this. But I also just sit down in front of a computer and play games. Like I worked a real job before. I'm not saying that he hasn't. I have no idea. So like I know um, that comparatively, like when I was making similar money doing that versus this, I still enjoy this more, right? I still enjoyed this more. So, and then combining that with sex and all my all the associated trauma potential. Okay. Um, okay, I was thinking about this about sex. Are we just keeping this in the realm of sex or just streaming in general? Because it seems like he's talking about it in general. Oh, what the hell's happening? Bro, are you serious right now? Fucking kidding me right now. He just completely lagged out. What are we at, 59, 53? About it. But, another, but at the same time, I know that I have a big blind spot. Money is blinding. Thinking about this about sex. People act like I was watching you react to my conversation with Destiny about sex. Dude, what the fuck's happening here? Like, am I fucking brain dead? Why does this keep restarting? Why is there an no, issue? That every element, every sexual encounter has some element of coercion and rape and trauma, and it's all it's all horrible on some level. And that people act like what? it's so nice and easy, but like it's never actually like that. And you were like, like here making all these fucking faces. And I um, well, that's a I was weird thinking plan. about how. If sex goes well, uh, the ideal is it feels good, and then you remember it for a couple days, and uh, you know, you do it again or whatever. You bond with the person, or you don't. You, you get your rocks off. But if it goes badly, if the person the person could do the same exact thing to you, but if they don't ask the right questions first, or you're not in the right mood, or, or you tell them not to right beforehand, they could do the exact same things. Mm-hmm lick you and touch you and penetrate you in all the exact same ways and places okay. and it can um it can scar you for the rest of your life it can make you never want to have sex again it can bro like that's true but the way that he's presenting it is in such a kind of disconnected way so like i've had sex with my wife i'll say for instance before and sometimes we'll have like really rough aggressive sex um and <laughs> sometimes like we'll go to do that and we might have it, and maybe she doesn't enjoy it. Um, it's not scarring for life. Like it not like I understand that there are there that can happen, but it's generally not going to happen for the most part. Um, you can just be like, "Oh, I'm not into this today," which is mostly what my wife does. She's like, "Oh, I'm not into this today," or I'll say, "I'm not into that today." It's really not that deep. Uh, can it create like this? Yeah, it can, but that's such an outlier. Especially if you're having sex with the same person multiple times, you usually have a pretty easy way to establish boundaries. If you don't, uh, then you're getting into like rape territory, which it's just that's different. 
But you're making this assertion that like, yeah, sometimes you could have sex the same way twice and you don't want it. It's like, yeah, that's called being in a different mood. That's like the same thing as like, there are some days that I'm not in the mood for fucking meatloaf and I have it. And it's like, it doesn't taste as good, but it doesn't mean that like, I'm going to kill myself and throw up everywhere. It's just such a very hyperbolic um, way to present this information. It's just so exaggerated. Like, it can happen, but that's a massive outlier. Isn't what a weird... I feel like this person has a sexual trauma, and they're projecting that onto us. <laughs> uh, onto, like, then as like, it's like, that's the general experience. Make you never want to hug again. Yeah. And then, but then we Good. talk about it like we're not playing with fire. <laughs> we are. Even though great. one... But we absolutely are. And so, so I knowing guess. that, that yeah. like I could do something to myself or, or, or something like, so one thing that happens a lot is, um, um, people multiple times in making videos critical of me will take stills from my porn of me jerking off okay. and take <laughs> my face while I'm like mid orgasm and Photoshop it <laughs> onto sorry. somebody wearing clothes Okay, and be like, Mr. Girl is a, like a fucking idiot. Like, well, like whatever you're saying about me. I'm sorry. It's kind of funny though. <laughs> Sorry. it's kind of funny it's shitty but it's kind of funny come on it's a little funny you know it just making me laugh a little bit i'm sorry um <laughs> that's insane it's fucked up but it's funny i'm sorry you doing that oh is God. worse than whatever you could possibly be accusing me of but i, I just find it so violating Why? and like gross hmm. and um and like I know I opened a door to that, but like there's a there's a feeling I get of like just violation and dread when I see that that is that's okay. not like anything um anything else. So yeah, is I so I'm saying there like, is a is the vulnerability. What is it? Is it like, be specific because I don't want to assume for you. Is it the fact that they got you in your yeah? Own it's face? like when somebody the, the difference between somebody hating you and saying I hate you and I, and like you you deserve to die or whatever, and somebody saying that while they're like looking at your dick is is it like hits you pretty differently. And, or me, it hits me oh, pretty differently. So, Jesus I mean, even Christ. without that, there's just so many things that can go wrong. So I just think that when when you're doing sex work, you're just opening a door to a, a very dangerous thing. Yeah. And you don't know right. when it's dangerous, and you don't know how it's affecting you, and you can't know. And so that's why I'm saying I'm better than well, you. You can still I, know, but I can't. Okay. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to simplify my answer and just say like, yes, it's good or it's bad or I figured mm. it out. I don't believe anybody's. I don't believe it can be figured out. Mm. Okay. See, but that's a little isolating right you're limiting yourself and your ability to problem solve and say oh okay i am smart enough to come to this conclusion at least and then to build off of this conclusion like even if you start off with thinking that we're humans and even existing itself is playing with fire i think being alive is crazy and magnificent and just insane how we survive every day i do things every day to myself i'm like i could have died and i didn't holy shit another day where i get to live and play you know games and get high like crazy and then i just amp like i just put that knowledge against everything i'm doing so when i do drugs like i i did dmt a while back and when i did that I made a decision that, hey, ben this goes bad. This is how I'm going to react. Or even when I do BDSM, I usually call my sister and I say, hey, let mom and dad know that if I die, like I died happy. You know, because I do kind of risky behavior when I do BDSM. The idea is that I life is risky. Friendly and so when you play with fire, you should be cautious and be safe if you can. Yes. And then enjoy. You, okay. So you are aware, you agree that when you're doing sex work, you're playing with fire. Sure. Yeah. yeah we established that a while ago. Yeah. I think she said that. Do you agree something. that you're playing with more fire than when you're doing your non-sexual calls? I don't do sexual calls. Yeah. That's okay. why I said non-sexual. Oh, you did say non-sexual. I thought you said, sorry, I heard sexual. I was like, oh, wait. Um, I don't know because mm, depends. If you say like my calls can get, some people think I'm playing with fire because some of my callers are on quite so, yes. intense journeys. Unstable. Yeah, yes, some of them. A different, you're playing with a different kind of fire. Yes. So I think all the existence is that way. I think me even right. being here with you is sort of playing with fire, but I'm hoping to get burned in the good way, in a masochistic, delicious way. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So... Uh, <laughs> But I think, I look, if you asked me, like, if, is my sister taking less of a risk with her life being a teacher than I am as a sex worker? Yeah. But everything in my life is playing with fire. My dad's told me since I was a child, Betsy, you play with fire, you're going to get burned. And girl, I've been burned a lot. But for me and my personality and what I desire out of life, the curiosity is worth it. That's why I'm a cat. So I've lost many lives because I want to know. Okay. When no, I'm asked the question, the, wait, Max, when I'm asked the question, how am I? I want to know the answer. I don't know how you're fine not knowing the answer. I just don't think that you can. That's why I'm a level six because I know that you can't know. You, you can't know like how you're doing. I don't know that that's just too woke. Like you can know how you're doing. You that's a weird thing. How are you doing? I'm all right. Like you can know if you're doing well or not for like the day. Like I'm doing all right. I have to pee a little bit. I'll probably hold it for a little bit. Um, I'm enjoying playing balloons, and this is a very interesting conversation. So I'm I'm doing all right. You know, I'm doing all right. I feel a little off, but I think I'll be okay. You know what I mean? But so I can know. 
Um, but why do you keep saying I, you can't know? It's just a. You sound very depressed. I feel bad for this guy. It's like, truly, not even memeing. You can't uh, know everything, and most of us will die not knowing very much. I know very little. But I think what I sure. can know is what I'm experiencing. I can know me and my consciousness. Oh, yeah, I don't agree. Well, okay. you, well uh, I mean, are you defining your consciousness as what you know, or do you? What? Like, I think I think one thing I run into with a lot of people is I talk to them as though they don't know how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. I do so I talk too. to everybody like, yeah. So I, I, it's assumed that there is a. Large what is the question? How are you feeling mean to this guy? I'm very, I'm very curious. I don't understand. Why is it such a deep question to you? Large, you know, the rest of the iceberg <laughs> that you don't know about. Do you do you agree with that? I think there is the rest of the iceberg, which is why you should spend your life exploring it and figuring it out and putting it in different situations. That's how you know the self. That's how you know other people. So you put yourselves in situations. Like I can. Do think you agree of that there's a a large amount of that that you can never know? About the a self or blind, about... A permanent... Uh, about yourself, about your feelings. A permanent blind spot. Sort of. Sort of. I've been experimenting with LSD, you know shrooms, and weed. You know and I've been trying what? to do this oh, experiment God. where you people what? people told me when I first did acid, they were like, do not look at yourself in the mirror. And I was like, oh, why? And they're like, you'll see things you never thought you'd know about yourself. I was like, really? So I went to the mirror and I looked at myself and I was like, it's the same old shit. And then I was like, oh, you guys don't do that regularly? I literally examine everything about my body, about who I am. I sit with myself constantly. But then I also put it against other people's energy. I go and I talk to people and I'm like, hey, what would Max do if he had me? Max do something. What would I learn about myself if Max had it like his way? Then I could learn something about myself, you know? Maybe he'd do something insane or maybe he wouldn't do anything. Maybe he would just look at me in a room and I'd have to be okay with him staring at me. Maybe he'd bring out the wait, wait, wait. When you said what Max, if Max had me. Yeah. Like as a, Wait, like, have you ever, um, sorry, it's a little BDSM me, I guess, but like, you know, when you go to someone and you say like, I'm, I'm familiar with oh, the terminology. You can well, just, okay. So I have this idea that if I put us in a room together and said, let's just like, see what happens. There would be an organic, interesting sort of dance of energies that could occur. And I don't know what it will mm -hmm. be. And maybe we can preemptively negotiate for some sort of safety barriers. But in general, I think you can kind of see where things go and you learn about you, you learn about them, you grow and you learn more about that iceberg. You're talking about a scene. Yes. I'm talking about a scene. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. so you learn more about the iceberg. I think there I have are a girlfriend. Yes, I'm aware. She seems nice. We're very happy together. I figure she is much. nice. <laughs> Stop, please. So, uh, is, would this be uncomfortable for her? Should I? T is this like a satir? Like I'm just looking at his face right now. Is this like a real? Stop, please. Hold on. <laughs> very happy together. Iceberg. I think there I have are a girlfriend. Yes, I'm aware. She seems nice. We're very happy together. I figure she as is much. nice. <laughs> Okay, it's a little, it's a little, 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 sexuality and your sexual fantasy is about me that feels like if I were to do the same thing to a woman mm -hmm. it would be um, you're using your privilege well I don't really want to have sex with you though and I want to have a non-sexual moment with you in which we are naked and together but we are not sexual I don't even want to yeah. why okay. yeah whatever <laughs> if I said that to a woman it would be well, maybe most scandalous. women. I think so, but I think I am unlike most women. I have an incredibly high drive. I've I'm studied. I'm talking about the like society. This. I'm talking about well, the. Well, fuck them. The, we're not. We're, they're not around. We know that. But we're talking right now, just us, right? So, like, I, are you uncomfortable with my forwardness, or are you uncomfortable with the way society is going to perceive this conversation? I'm comfortable with your forwardness because of the double standard. <sighs> Why? Set on by existence instead of just us together. Just like we're having I a moment. Lose, yeah. we're, it's not just no. We're not having a moment. Oh. We're broadcasting a show to hundreds. Of Should people. I be considering them right now? I am. Hmm. I don't want Hi to Max's audience. My audience is fine. They're prepared. They're oh, crazy. Yeah. But your audience? Do you think it's them? Well, you're also. You're also. You're also the woman. I'm just pointing out that it's like it. Uh, it's like when gay guys touch women's boobs when they're drunk, or mm -hmm. when women are drunk and they grab your dick. It's. Uh, it's not fair. Okay. Well, I mean, the whole dick. I mean, I, I've never experienced that part, but um, I mean, that's considered inappropriate to society. I mean, I get historically, it's been like you should want it. But are we against like a whole conversation about double standards and why they exist and this and that and the other thing? Um. <laughs> well, let's make it more fair by showing people we can have this conversation. It will be nice, and I'll like it after. And I won't accuse you of anything, and it'll be great. And then we can change society yeah. all in one conversation. I don't know. I I I. I uh... You know what? I should have. Um... Wait. Why did we get onto whether it, whether it makes me uncomfortable? Mm, oh, because Shaylin is that her name? Shaylin is that how I say it? 
You mentioned yeah. her and you mentioned facetiously that you're in a relationship. I'm not sure if I yeah, should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you negotiating yeah, with yeah, your yeah. boundaries? I thought based off his face, he was like partially joking, but maybe he wasn't. Are you no, negotiating no, that, your boundaries no. or? No, no, no. Making a joke, I'm just right? pointing out to you. I'm, well, I'm, not, I'm not just making a joke. I'm acknowledging oh, that uh, I you know, sorry, feel bro. her presence here. I think she seems nice and interesting. Would she? I hope she doesn't think she I She seems am, nice. Well, I don't know her. So I'm basing her on what I've seen. I don't even know her. Based on what I've seen, she seems nice. Can I ask you a question? Do you not like that my eyes flicker back and forth? Do you think I'm reading chat? I don't understand. Why? Why are what? What's happening here? Why is he harping on every one of her words? <laughs> Why is this like? What's happening? It's a pretty normal experience to be like, yeah, I don't know somebody too well, but they seem nice. Yeah. Okay. Why is that like a? Why is he criticizing? <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Is the girlfriend a real doll? Maybe. This is a yeah, NPC behavior. Maybe. Um. Okay. Uh, I don't. No, that's fine. If you your eyes, why are you asking that? I I don't have a. I didn't notice. I, yeah. Okay. I don't have a preference about whether your eyes flicker back and forth. Okay, okay just checking. I noticed it could I, look I weird, assume... but I'm looking at both of us. I have two of us on the screen, so I'm looking at both of us. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at. I'm looking back and forth. I I assume that um, you'll tell me if you look at you. Yeah. You I think it's dry humor? Just, yeah. That's I, possible. I, yeah, I thought I thought I picked a little bit of dry humor before, um, but he's it, it might be. He might just double down on the dry humor so it comes off like differently. Like he doesn't let you know that it's just a joke, which is possible. Um, but I don't know how much of it would and wouldn't be a joke. So, you know, obviously it makes it a little difficult to watch. I can't, I get too distracted. So I won't hear you if I'm reading the chat. Like I won't, I will literally zone you out. So it doesn't work. Um, um, I, so yeah, I, I feel uh, women are pretty rapey and uh, it makes me uncomfortable. Okay. Are you saying, I, I understand that. They're I just want to make sure. Women are very sexually entitled. Some of them can be. And I just want to make Maybe. sure. You are. But should I reel it back in? Are you asking me to consider your feelings and I will reel it back in? Uh, no, I'll tell you if I want you to stop. So you want me to keep going, but you don't like it? Or do you like it? It's not that I want you to keep going or I want you to not do it. I want to say how I feel about it. And how I feel is, uh, um, I mean, it's yeah, it is weird to like have somebody talk about their like physiological arousal uh, on a stream with you the first time you meet them. It's very forward. Well, it's, it's not, not something like I would do. Well, it's mental one. It's more like so, I'm like, it's just like, so tell her to stop. I mean, your argument's like, oh, well, I, I just, you, I, like, I get it. Women have, um, it's a double standard when it comes to sex between men and women, but like, why don't you say you don't like it? It's like weird because he's complaining about not liking it basically while he also wants the behavior to continue to engage. So it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, what are you talking about at this point? to your brain and i think that we could create an interesting thing mentally more than orgasmic yeah, but you're, talking about your, you're talking about your underwear yeah but that's just like a physical reaction because i'm mentally turned on turned on is that okay okay it's fine but it's, it's a bit rapey hmm. i can see that rapey bro come on like it's on it's it's very forward it's inappropriate but rapey why, why why are we using these words like this why is everything gotta be fucking rape <laughs> everything's parasocial and rape She's grooming us right now. It's like, holy shit, it really is not that deep all the time. Like, it's inappropriate, generally speaking. You know, it's up to individuals and, like, the way that their boundaries would, like, display themselves um, in this scenario, obviously. Because you don't have to be okay with this. But, like, um, rapey? A boogie moment. Why? What? Okay. I can see it. It's too forward. So I can reel it back. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't... I'm not telling you to reel it back. I'm just labeling your behavior as rapey. Yeah, you're just complain. You're basically complaining about the behavior. And then when she says, I'll stop, you're like, no, but I like it. You seem to like the interaction, but you want to complain about it. I mean, I just... <laughs> it's so stupid. Mm, I guess, but I think for me, rapey is only if it's not wanted. So if you don't want it, then it's rapey. But if you like it, then we're just flirting. But I can I can literally like no, shut no, it down. No, you yes. can, no, you can like something that's rapey. I'm not saying... Bro, come on. Bro, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, what? If you're consenting to it, it wouldn't be rapey. What she's saying isn't fundamentally, um, or in inappropriate. It might be considered situationally inappropriate, but it's not fundamentally inappropriate. It's if you don't like it. But you seem to, or it doesn't even matter if you like it or not. You're you're consenting to it without any pressure to not. She's given you ample opportunity to say like, "Oh, I don't like that," and it wouldn't change anything about the conversation. So, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, you're going, this guy's fucking insane. This is crazy. 
You uh, can like the fantasy I, of rape. I don't. I don't. Becomes... I. I don't especially like it. I, okay. But I don't dislike. I don't especially dislike. So it. then say to stop. It does make me a bit uncomfortable, and the reason it makes me uncomfortable okay. is that I think it's presumptuous and rapey to say that if somebody likes you something you're doing, that means it's not rapey is insane. I, Lots I, of people I, I like rapey things or situations. Well, I like what. Are we talking about like consensual, non-consensual sex? Like, cons yeah, like you would consider that rapey, but it's not literal rape. It's consensual non-consent. What are you talking about? And you being uncomfortable with something doesn't even make it rapey. Like, there've been there's some times where I've fucked uh, girls and I was uncomfortable. They didn't rape me. Like, they wanted me to do something or they did something to me that I found uncomfortable. It doesn't mean that I was sexually assaulted. Like, sometimes sex is uncomfortable, um, especially when you do it with somebody you don't really really know. But like, what the fuck's happening here? <laughs> this is this, this conversation's fucking insane, bro. I know a lot of people don't like this guy because, like, the whole the pedo joke thing. Um, but, like, I, I don't know, man. Just the way that I've seen him interact here, it's just, like, insufferable to an extent. And, like, I don't want to dislike the guy or anything. But, like, it's like, Jesus Christ. Like, it, everything has to be... It's it. We don't have to go, like, super in-depth on every single thing. We're Right now, we're having, like, a 10-minute art conversation about whether she should be flirtatious or not. And we're calling it rapey. And it's like, holy shit. It's like why? Just say yeah, stop or don't stop. It really doesn't have to be like this super deep thing. I like CNC and I like rape as much as the next person, but only in a fantasy. When it's real rape, well, then it kind of ruins the mood. Well, now the mood uh, is ruined. I don't think that's, that's true. true. You think the mood can't? Okay, that's fair. What? I think an individual. Yeah, lots, can of, have lots of people. Lots of people experience orgasm, arousal, and right. joy and pleasure but during different. actual rape. Yes, of course, but that's different, right? Okay, but that's different. What? <laughs> I gotta slow it down. Some people do. Like sometimes that is a response, but that doesn't. You could say yes and no here. It's really not that deep. That's your body reacting to a thing that might make sense for you. But mentally, <sighs> there's like a different relationship happening, but not always. So I'm open to all of the individual experiences that could occur. But right now, I want to make sure that we're not meta, having a meta conversation about your boundaries or feelings. But I... No, I'll tell you if I'm setting a boundary. Okay. I, we are talking about my feelings, though. I'm saying I feel off-put by the rapiness of some of the things you've said. Bro, just and... like using the term rapey is just like gross. It's just, it's just not the applicable term here. It's not rapey. It's like very flirtatious. And you could just be like, hey, I don't like it. Let's stop. That's all you have to do. Like, why do we have to turn everything into like a fucking sexual assault story? It's like Jesus Christ. It's kind of by your um, your whole uh, empire. Hmm. Okay. What is it about my empire you don't like? I find the blurring of sex work and self-help work mm -hmm. and uh, cult establishment um it feels culty it's like a sex cult really and that seems kind of inherently rapey to me i feel like it's like a, as an exaggerated perspective i understand what he's saying like it seems like it's a little inappropriate for you to uh do like sex work and self-help work and it's like one thing because you can get very close emotionally with some of these people and you could very easily take advantage of them uh that's why you you know this type of work should probably really only be done by mental health professionals who go through training to understand like what is and isn't the proper boundary to go through across that's fine i don't know if i'd call it like a, a cultist or, or rapey that seems to be uh, a rather exaggerated perspective on that i guess if you look at it Again, the way it could be i don't yeah, think it I mean, is objectively i don't think it is right because like we're on Discord and YouTube and we're having calls and most of the calls are about people's life. They're here for a particular reason. It doesn't operate like a cult. They can come and go as they please. Um, they have access to me. Yeah, but you're telling them that you can offer them the real truth. You, no, no, no. I can your, offer them a follow? tool to maybe help oh, oh, yeah. That's what a cult leader says. And you can, you can, you can offer them. I, I'm, just, I'm just here to open doors. Yeah, whatever. Uh, it's up to you to blah, blah, blah. But, you know, sign up. I think you're right. Look, Max, in blah, the blah. same way. That consensual sex yeah. and rape is the same thing because both of them involve sex. The energy and the context changes it. So I agree mm -hmm. that from the outside, you could see what I'm doing. Right, You'd be like, I'm... Uh, it's the same. Okay, the same sex. If I is join happening. the cult, then I won't think it's a cult anymore. That's how all cults are. But you can't join it. You, there's nothing to join. Is there's not, not a living entity? The only place that's, that's not true. Well, where is the living entity? Where the does Patreon. it exist? Well, you have a Patreon. Do you run a cult? To some extent, not to the same extent that you do, though. I'm not telling people that they're going to find enlightenment <laughs> by giving me money. Well, I don't tell them that either, though. That's just how you see it. Is it? It's how everybody who watches that video will see it. That's fine. It's not for everybody. Well, okay, that's fine. But I don't think other people think that I'm telling people they can be enlightened if they give me money. Okay. I think people think that if they give me money, then they can they can rest assured that I will pay my bills while I have weird conversations with people on YouTube and that I will continue to make weird YouTube videos. But I don't think... Same. Well, no. I've been on YouTube for 12 looking, years, looking, 
I've been on YouTube for 12 years. I just started the levels a year ago. People have always been giving me money to hang out, do conversations. I've been doing conversations before I wrote the levels. I mean, he has like a point. It's just like buried in like the insane way that he's pre uh, pre presenting it. It's just now okay. people incorporate I, the levels I, into I, the calls. That does not contradict anything I just said. But I'm just letting you, you know people. that it's not like you're I invented people. the YouTube channel for the levels. It's not like I invented the calls for the levels. The calls, the YouTube doesn't matter why that. you did any. It doesn't matter why you're doing anything that you're doing. All that matters is, and for the purpose of this accusation, I'm leveling at you, <laughs> is that you are telling people that they can achieve a higher level of introspection and consciousness. Not guaranteed. If they follow your, if their own, well, okay, a hope, there's a hope that they could if they follow your teachings. Um, if, if my teachings are right for them. If they're not right for them, then it won't work. I, I could be the wrong tool for them. They could need a different That's, person. Yeah, that yeah. that reinforces the cultishness. Why? Because to have a good cult, you want to split everybody into die hard converts and then people who think that you're crazy. And then you want to you want to shunt all the people who think you're crazy out. And then it's even better for you when they call you crazy because then that reinforces the uh, inner sanctum of the cult. Yeah, I think it would work that way if I didn't do everything I could to avoid the cultiness. But I agree that from the outside, that's what it looks like. Okay. I don't think you're doing everything you can to avoid the cultiness if you're telling people that you can teach them the ultimate truths about themselves and you're a sex worker. Okay, I disagree. And you're having private conversations with people for money. I disagree. Like I'm a therapist, it. a sex worker, a priest. Friend, and whatever they need me to be. Lover. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I'm a Britney. I'm whatever you need me to be. I'm like a ditto on Pokemon. That was a but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. Because I think life is much more nuanced and interesting than we've laid it out to be. The cons like the construct of our society is pretty good, but usually helps the general public. And I think people like me who are not the general public, we need something a little bit more niche. So You're that's like why Dr. I do it. K. Yeah. My a part of my audience likes Dr. K. They recently got me into him the last year. Yeah. Yeah, I think your obsession with Dr. K is very human. We're using human as an insult now? No. No. No, I think it's like, I think it is what it is. Like you have a belief, you think yeah, it's right. That's, an, you that, wanna... that's also, an, that's, those are all insults. I think I do the same thing. So I guess I'm insulting both of us. Maybe, but that's an underhanded criticism to say, I think you're X, Y, Z, it is what it is. Or I think it's very human. I think it is very. It's not necessarily wrong within the context, like knowing Brittany. Like, I don't think that she's actively trying to um, insult them. But, like, yeah, I, I get what he's saying. Sure. Very human. And I think it's your right to do it, as I think it's. How could that be an insult? Um, I mean, if you, if you recall earlier to this conversation, back in the conversation, we were talking about, like, Nazis. And she's like, oh, it's, like, it's human behavior. It just is what it is. Like, she, she talks about, like, bad human behaviors in, in this way. That's like, ah, it's just human. It is what it is. It's just human. It's just human. She uses that. It's like, yeah, when it comes to her saying it, like, yeah, I don't think that's unreasonable for him to be like, yeah, you're insulting me to an extent. You're using human as an insult. It's Dr. K's right to exist. You and I differ in the sense that I don't want to stop people from living their own life. K, you but... want to put limitations on people. That's where we differ. You want to limit things based off of Max's idea of values, and I don't. Do I don't you think care. That it should be, do you think there should be a law against murder? <laughs> kind of. What? Okay. So you do think there should be some limitations? Yeah, I believe in like, yeah, behavior. I try to get as like, I'm not much of a rule follower, but I think like rules are like guidelines. Okay. So do you think it should be illegal to steal? Like, do you think if I find out where you live, I should be able to steal your couch? No. Okay. okay. I mean, you can so, try. I mean, you could, you could take my couch. It's kind of broken in a little bit. Like, I don't want a new one. So you can have it if you come and get it. And don't damage my walls taking it out. So, you, <laughs> so you do agree on some limitations on people? Yeah. Theory, yeah. So and that's, I believe that's, that's I have that's stringent. Like, I have stringent ideas of how you need to be to interact with me. So Destiny, Steven and I talked about this, how Brittany yeah. has very black Deceiving. and white rules of how to deal with her. But in terms of what other people are doing with their one limited time on earth, I, I'm much more lax with what other people are doing than what people are doing around me. Okay. So do you think it should be illegal for me to steal from somebody else? Just not you. Um, like if you saw me breaking into somebody's house, you've never met this person before. And I say, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to steal all this person. murder. Maybe, but don't take my couch. Yeah. <laughs> Some stuff. They're on vacation. Yeah. That's probably wrong. Would you, that okay. is wrong. To Brittany, that's wrong. Yeah, I think would stealing you do is wrong. Just, would you call the police? Uh, probably not. Why? I'd probably talk to you, I guess. And well, I'd if I said, I said, I said, you know, I hear you, but I'm going to steal all this person's valuables anyway. Yeah. I'd Goodbye. I don't I'm know what I would house. do in that moment because I've never been quite in that situation, but I would definitely take it as it came. So I'd probably talk to you. Well, I would imagine in the situation you wouldn't know the person and it would just be somebody stealing from a house or something from a house. Wouldn't you just call the cops? This is such a weird conversation in both ends. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's illegal. You shouldn't be able to steal other people's property. It and they'd be like, I just feel like you're being really inefficient. Like, why don't you just like do X, Y, and Z? And then if you're like, nope, I'm still going to steal. I'd be like, okay, then I'm going to call the cops and we're having a negotiation for what's about to okay, occur. Okay, so I know, all my point is that basically you're just saying that you have different values about what should be allowed, not that things shouldn't be disallowed. You yeah. do think something should not be allowed. And I think what Dr. K is doing should not be allowed, and you think that it should be. Yeah. I think that what you're doing should be allowed. 
I don't. I'm not trying to. Because I'm not you. licensed, right? I think yeah, that's your argument no, for Yeah. Well, there's no board saying you didn't sign a thing saying you're not going to do what you're doing. Right. Right. I'm and there's no law against what you're doing. Right. So. But even if there was no a law reason. against what I was doing, would that be the like? Are you the? Does the law decide or does Mac decide? I don't think there should be a law against what you're doing. Okay. But you think there should be a law against think, what Dr. K is doing? Uh, yes, there because is. Because he's licensed. And I think, there, yes, there is a law against it, and, he, and I think it's a good law. Yeah. Okay, cool. I th there's a law against, if you told people you were a therapist, that would be against the law. Yeah. Oh, is he a therapist on Twitch, Dr. K? Okay. I think that's I'll a good law. I'll look at that later. Because you can't be a therapist and uh, not be licensed and yeah. not be trained and be, you know, having unstructured conversation video games stuff like that like it you need, you need to have more of a plan if you're gonna call yourself a therapist and more training yeah i make it pretty clear that mental health is a completely different thing than i do but i find that spiritual or philosophy help often well, helps she does do some so most of the people i talk to have therapists stuff, or psychologists or people that they go to for their mental health yeah it's a good balance i find that's why i think my work works because i can't help with the mental health stuff not really like you, i have to go to a therapist for my shit you have to go to a therapist for yours but then you can come to me after the therapist stuff just like i'm a physician after you see your doctor and you get the cancer figured out come to me for the other stuff because there's still more than that we're more than our bodies we're more than our like experiences we're so we're, we're many things i believe but not everyone has to be forced to be in tune with that thing either like i don't think we should go around telling people in my opinion i don't go around i don't want to go around telling people like i don't want to be an evangelical i don't want to convert people i want people to make the decision on their own if they want to engage engage if they don't want to don't do it you should just work to be joyful whether you're two or five well you need to convert people in order to make a living Hardly. you do want to convert people that's not no. true you clearly no want to. no you clearly, no 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 clearly, no no you no, clearly no. Are, no. Why would you? You're, do you know why? Do you sense. know why? Because half the people in my Discord ask them. They bully me all the time. Sometimes they'll start off with a call. Brittany, I think the levels are bullshit. I'm like, fantastic. Hit me. And like, we'll have this conversation. Or sometimes we'll be like, I don't even want to talk about the levels. I want to talk about this like philosophy thing. Okay, I'm like, great. That's fine. Right? But clearly you made, I'm not saying you want to convert everybody. Maybe you do. But you need to convert some people. Why? What's the purpose? I don't need it. They don't need to be anything different than what they are. Because it's your job. No, 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 no. Because my job doesn't, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Convert them to. I'm making an assumption you mean my way of thinking, which is not necessary for my work to work. So convert them to... Followers? Customers? Maybe. I. Th like, yeah, I, I think if somebody's paying yeah. $250 to talk to you for an hour, that you probably don't care whether they believe in your levels or not. I, I believe that. I guess. I but, guess but, the way I run my calls, you're, though... You're... <sighs> Shut up. I'm trying to think about like what. Oh, all right. I just want to. Because look, money's you. not yeah. first, right? Everyone knows I've turned them away from calls. People ask how many people I've blocked and refunded. Ask how many people like if I think the call's not working for you, I'm like you should probably talk to someone different, right? Because it's not about the money. If it was about the money, I'd make a lot more money. But it's about making a living while attaining my goals and offering a service that works. I don't want to be a used car salesman. If it's not going to work, I'm not going to sell it to you. So it has to work. And I have. So she's have, saying like, that because she believes in it more, so it's better, I guess. Or I guess she, what she's saying is that she doesn't use like predatory tactics to pull people in. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Um, I mean, I don't know if she does or doesn't. I, I, I would assume she doesn't. <clears throat> but is that the argument? Because people who are usually trying to like, like it's a snake oil salesman. Uh, but she thinks the snake oil works. I don't know. I mean, maybe she helps people. I really don't know the specifics. All I know is I might lose this round and fucking get upset. The high success rate of people benefiting from those interactions, whether they come once or for five years, there's just a huge benefit. I've seen a huge benefit come. in their lives. And when it's not, they get kicked out or I get told like not like rudely. Like I tell them like, hey, babe, you do much better in this arena. I'm not helping you the way I think I should be. So that's how I live within my moral structures to say I don't want to be a used car salesman. I'm not the dad. I'm Matilda. I'm trying to do something better here than just being okay. a therapist like I've met who just takes my money and doesn't care if I get better versus the therapist I did have that really helped me and saved my life. Like I want to be, you know, I want to actually do good with my work. So, yeah, I can see the issues. And I do my best, but people are going to people max. I can't live my life and limit myself and how I can impact my community because a few people might not interact with me in the way that quote unquote saves them, which I never promised in the first place. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you're building an unethical cult empire around yourself. I'm saying you, it's almost unavoidable when you're an online figure, but you do your best through the process to communicate clearly with your viewers. I don't think it is unavoidable. Well, I think I think you can balance it. I think you can remind people, look, I think it's beautiful and like poetic when a person comes to me and they go, I really are, feel connected. Wait. They go, I really feel connected to you. Like, I feel like you see me. And I have to be like, oh, take me off that pedestal and that parasocial relationship, right? I'm just a person, right? So the moment you- No, you're, but you're not, but your whole your whole philosophy is based on the idea that you are a level five. So you're not But I wasn't when I even wrote it. I wasn't even a five when I wrote it. Like, that's the point. Every, cult, like, leader, every cult leader starts the story with, I started out just like you. Do, do, does every, I mean, I don't know. I don't know too much about cult leaders. You might be right, you might be wrong. I don't know. Does every cult leader start out like that? Like, oh, this used to be me. I mean, I guess they would. They'd start off by saying, like, this used to be me. And you could be just like me if you follow my program. 
I don't know. I'm not educated enough on Britney's program to know if it's cult esque. Um, but if she tried to help people get to level five, said like maybe there's a level of cult there. Um, do they kill themselves at some point? Because that's probably where it gets a, a little bit, you know, r rough. You know, <laughs> where it gets a little too extreme. I am still like everybody else. Every cult leader says that too. Well, then I, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, you're right. No matter how you look at it, but what I know is, is really happening is I know it's not happening. It just looks like it's happening that way, but it's not. That's not a very good defense, but okay. What if you're wrong? Um, that'd be really sad, but I don't think so. I think I'm very transparent, and that helps me feel very confident that I'm not running a super cult. Um, if I, d I don't think so. Maybe. Well, then I don't. Welcome to the stream, brother. How You're you like doing? my worst nightmare of what I'm gonna turn into. <laughs> why? I why people are cool I, and they're awesome. I don't, I, I don't want to be a cult leader rationalizing. You say that, but you were people. you say that, but you're destined. I wonder. I wonder how upset Bernice actually getting right now because she would probably mask it pretty well because he's going. He's going in pretty. <laughs> He's going in pretty hard on her. And he's largest disciple. Like, you're his biggest fan. You know what I'm saying? Like, I believe you. But I'm saying if you were where I was, he's, he's you're his largest fan? disciple. Like, you're... You, say that, but you, were, you say that, but you're Destiny's largest disciple. Like, you're his biggest fan. Why, are, why is there a trend of Destiny's biggest disciples saying weird shit about kids? Bosh. <laughs> it actually is kind of true, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I believe you. But I'm saying if you were where I was, you would be able to... I don't to think I'm... How am I... Why do you think I'm Destiny's biggest fan? <laughs> the, you, tr you treat him like he's your cult leader. Versus, no, like... I, yeah, you, no, no, yeah, no. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Is that true? Oh, man. I don't I don't know enough about him at all. I know that they've had conversations together. I never got that vibe, but I've never really sat down and, like, watched the conversation. But I wonder if she's just saying this because she's getting kind of offended. And so she's trying to, like, uh, look at a comparative moment in his life where he could... Or rather, she could say, like, oh, you're just like me in, in this way as, like, an insult. <laughs> you gave him... you. Somebody said something to you the other day. What was it? Something like, I would never talk shit on Destiny or I would never betray him. He's given me everything. He gave you a moment on the internet. It's hardly everything. He gave you a second on the internet, which is just, like, what happens on his channel. I would talk shit about Destiny because he's a cuck. <laughs> you give him a lot of credit for your career, but you are also the thing that makes people stay. Okay. I know that. Oh, I give myself plenty of credit for my career. I'm I, I'm a big fan of my work. Okay. But um, <laughs> me being extremely grateful to Destiny mm -hmm. for launching my career mm -hmm. is different from me being his biggest fan or being a, like a, a disciple. Maybe. Your language is... I, I, dis I, I, I think I, I openly disagree with a lot of things he says. My viewers openly disagree with my levels. They make videos about it. They criticize me constantly. Um, yeah, but I'm not, uh, I'm not like his viewer. What do you mean? You're not Destiny's viewer? I mean, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, um, <sighs> you're not repeatedly giving your viewers like airtime on your extremely widely watched stream. And it's not just that he's They've giving me before. airtime. People have been on before. What do you mean? I've done streams with viewers and Discord people. Okay, so then I think I think it makes sense for those people to be more grateful to you. I'm just saying that I don't I don't see my relationship with Steven as like a fan uh, creator right, relationship. Right, but I also don't see the viewer the oh, relationship no. I have with my fans as a cult. But I'm saying from the outside, that's what it looks like. I want uh, this guy. Well, even from the inside, definitionally, I think that is what it is. Like it has all the hallmarks. It literally the doesn't. Cult. They have the right to come and go. It's their money. I don't decide if they're here. They decide if they're Bullshit. here. I don't even know if they. That's leave. how cults work. That's, that's how, how, how religions cults work. work. It's the difference between a religion and a cult is usually your ability to live without it. They can live without my channel. I'm just a YouTuber. They should most certainly leave and go live their life one day and never think about me. Well, that's a good point. A lot of cult leaders make it seem like if you leave, you're gonna fucking die. So. Why would they spend their life no, thinking about some random YouTuber? No, the difference between a religion and a cult <laughs> is that oh, close. a cult is around a person, pretending it's around an idea. Yeah, but I'm I could be a, I can be a Christian, but, but like Jesus doesn't know that I became a Christian. No, no person, no person like individually needs me to become Christian if I become Christian. That's why it's a religion. It's just I don't know if I agree with that. So he's <sighs> like a. But like Jesus doesn't know that I became idea. A cult is around a person pretending it's around an idea.
why can't you argue that because re- I think that there can be like cult esque aspects of some re- way that some religion practice. You could probably make an argument that religion has a bit of a cult feel to it. But this idea that like in order for it to be a cult, God, since God is a person and you're not God, religion can't be a cult. But also, I could just tell you that like, hey, well, God's an idea. I mean, God might be real, but he might not be. Maybe God's an idea, and maybe some people weaponize that relationship with God to generate like a cult esque type of a situation. It's just a like it's weird. It's a weird. Um, I would have just said like, oh, but you know, religion can be a cult because she's saying like, oh, it's more like a religion, not a cult. I think all religion can be like, I, I don't know. It's just weird. Well, the difference between a religion and life one day and never think about me. Why would they spend their life no, thinking about some random YouTuber? No, the difference between a religion and a- yeah, I don't think that there necessarily always is a difference between a religion and a cult or. Not even the entire religion doesn't have to be cult esque for people to use religion as um like a cultist marketing ploy. So I don't know, it's just bizarre. Okay. A person. Pretending it's around an idea. Yeah, but I mean I could be a, I can be a Christian, but like Jesus doesn't know that I became a Christian. No no person no person like individually needs me to become Christian if I become Christian. That's why it's a religion. It's just like a belief system I can buy into. And I know you're presenting yours that way, but you're also a person. Yeah. I'm a YouTuber. So, like, of course, my audience is going to come to talk to me specifically. That's the point, is that I am the thing they are talking to. And when I die... You're telling them you have all the answers. No, I'm telling them I have specific answers for specific brains that help me on my journey. You're literally saying... You literally describe level fives as being, like, having reached this state of self-actualization and peace and harmony. The, the highest state that it is possible to reach. Well, okay. So I don't believe in the way that the gurus have like explained like peace and happiness and balance with life. I I'm think talking, it's, you talk about your own words. Right. So when I say these things, what I'm offering people is a better, more foundational understanding of themselves in relation to existence. People feel like they're in chaos. I felt like that. I was depressed, suicidal, all these yes, things. I, I, nah, 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 nah. Oh my God. This so, is it. Yes. You're not from engaging your pers- with anything no, 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 no. I feel like we're having a great conversation. What do you mean? This is great. I don't think we are. Right, I don't what's think wrong? you're responding to what I'm saying. Well, I'm trying to get there, but I feel like you have to understand how my brain works because you're categorizing me like I'm like a guru or something. Like I think I'm this big a deal. I-, I mean, I I wouldn't categorize Bernie as like a cult, but as a guru, I might categorize her as a guru. Um, you know, I don't think gurus are as bad as cultists. You know, um, but I that's kind of how I would categorize her. So to be honest, you know. I just think I'm a human who shits like everyone else, and I figured out a specific. I mean, ba- I mean, based on what I'm hearing here, you know what I mean. Like, I'm not super educated on what what's going on, but based on what I'm hearing here from her, even her, yeah, I would I would say she's like a guru, you know. Word for word, you're going down the cult leader playlist, right? I know word that. For word, every Max, single, okay. nothing I say will be good enough for you because you've already decided it's culty. Because if you knew what a cult was, yes. you know I wasn't a cult. Habibi, have you never seen documentaries on cults? I'm way too lazy to be a cult leader. Come on. So all so all we're doing now is seeing how much of this you're willing to own and the answer is none well i don't want to miss under i don't want to misconstrue what i'm doing i'm very clearly because what you're doing is you're running you're 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 bringing here's what you're doing max now people are going to hear this and say Brittany has unlimited time and energy and no boundaries and like a cult leader she'll welcome me into her arms no bitch i'm a real person and i'm going to make you have a distance from me and have a space for me when i hear cult leader i think the cult leader wants attention 24 7 girl i only want it part-time when we work in Otherwise, I'm a human. I got feelings. I'm gonna watch that's anime. Not what I, that's not what I said when a I said that you were a cult leader is a very I did, I did not specific say anything energy. About your free time. But that's what it insinuates. So it implies to the audience who hears the word cult that I am okay. encompassing not only my ideas into other people's brains, but I am encompassing my life into running a cult. Did what she kind said of a- that she's compassing into people's brains. Wow. Cult runs not full time. Be efficient with your cultiness. Do you think running- Jordan Peterson is a cult leader? No, I think he has a cult following. Okay. I think you are trying to amass a cult following. I literally. Well, who's? In, I mean, okay. I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a very different thing for being a cult leader. So, like, uh, what? I don't know if there's anything wrong with ma- with amassing a cult following. I mean, when I hear a cult following, I don't I don't look at it in the sense of a following that's like. A, I just th- maybe I don't know exactly what a cult following is, but I, when I look, think of a cult following, it's uh, a bunch of people who are very dedicated to their their person. It's usually like it, using the term cult is, is in an exaggeratory way and not actually you know proposing that they're in a legitimate fucking cult. Um, you know, it's usually not like a negative term. Pizza Hut is a cult. Yeah, that's true. Uh you guys are fucking so stupid. But like, yeah, I mean, who cares? Like, what's wrong with trying to have a more of a cult following, more of having like a, a dedicated following? I mean, there's a what does it really matter? 
I guess it depends on what you're talking about, but like, why is it like a bad thing to want to have people like, yeah, that really like you a lot? Like, I'd like that too. I don't want to get to a point where the people who follow me never disagree with me because I, I think that um, some of my audience can keep me in check and some of my ideas, you know, we, we talk about ideas, but that doesn't mean that they can't be a cult following that like likes you. It's just weird. Mm, not like his though. His I don't like that. I want a yes girl. We're going to be better and then I'm going to leave you when I need to cult following. If they're with me for three months and then gone, that's what I want. I want them to follow their joy. If I bring them joy, great. Once I stop, leave. The idea is that I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, whether I, I have an audience or not. I've always been doing it. For 12 years, I've been doing this. For years, people told me to quit. I just like talking to people, I like exploring. I feel like I've really found something in existence that is like peak good. I don't and like if cold, people yep, who want yep, it can yep. find it through my work, then I've lived and fulfilled my uh, happiness in life. That's all I want. But I'm selfish, so I get something out of it. I learn about people. I get a chance to talk to you. That's exciting. One day it all has to end though, right? Okay. I don't think you're engaging with what I'm saying. I disagree. I, I think that I think that she's engaging with what you're saying. What do you mean you don't think that she's engaging with? <laughs> oh, what? That's like, bro. That's a very lazy response. You don't think that she's engaging with what you're saying? She is engaging. She's just disagreeing. <laughs> you, that's. I mean, it's fine if you're like, I don't think you're understanding what I'm saying, but she's engaging with what you're saying. When people treat me like a cold leader, I put them in their place. Basically, what she's saying is that she tries to set boundaries with people so they don't idolize her. That's her whole point, which is a good thing because cult leaders generally want you to idolize them. And remind them that, like, that's not what I like. I don't like it. It's uncomfortable because it's not real. If I was a real cult leader, I would embrace it. But I'm not. It's exhausting. And I think it's creepy. Okay. But it's what humans do. It's like a part of the narrative. It's a part of our, it's just normal. People fall in love with you. They mistake who you are. They put you on a pedestal. So you take them down. You hold them in your arms. You go, that's not how we're doing it. Pat them on the head and you send them on their you way. You understand the insanity of saying that you don't want people to put you on a pedestal when you your philosophy is a level system, one through five, and you yourself are a level five. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the, do you get the joke? Do you get, like, I didn't do this you, on purpose. I really genuinely gave it numbers because so I would remember their names. But also. Why don't you change it? Well, I can't change it. It's already done. I ain't going to go back and redo all my work. Like, it's too late. And also, like, I don't ever plan on writing anything down because I don't think it's that kind of a system. I think introspection is a personal journey. And that's all it's all it's navigating. Look, at the end of the day, when you talk to conservatives and you say, you're only talking to me through this conservative lens, are you really going to tell me they're as introspective as somebody who's really acknowledged we're evolved animals over time, most likely? And if that's the case, then everything we're doing is just silly. Like, we're just, our whole life is a construct. Our whole existence is just us figuring it out. All of our ancestors putting in blood, sweat, and tears to figuring this out. And now we're here in a modern time. And I'm saying I think you I think you just revert to this like cosmic lens whenever you get cornered. Maybe. So if I say you're doing if I say I think you're doing something unethical, you say humans going to human. No, no, no. But you haven't pointed out anything I'm doing that's unethical according to what whose value system. Like I'm telling you within right. my value system, I operate accordingly and everyone knows my value system. I'm very strict with my boundaries with my viewers for this reason and I'm doing my best. But of course people are going to be obsessed. It's normal. And then you tell them, no, Habibi, you can't be obsessed with me. And then you send them on their way. Because that's what happens in life. People fall in love with you, but they fall in love with an idea of you. That's just normal life. It happens everywhere, even outside of cults. It happens at work. It happens with everybody you know. Someone admires you long enough, they fall in love with you. Maybe that's just a woman's perspective, though. I don't know. But I'm just used to it. So you just remind people that, like, you're a human and that this is inappropriate and you send them on their way. (laughs) Incredible. I like the awkward. <laughs> okay, so you think it's a big misunderstanding? No, I, uh, maybe not though. Maybe if I, and if I if I joined it, then I would say it's not a cult. No, not even. Look, when I go home to my family, oh, here comes Brittany, the philosopher. Oh, here comes Brittany running her cult. Everyone makes fun of me. Why wouldn't they? It seems silly. It's so silly. Beauty, some is silly, and sex is silly, and porn is silly, and life is silly, and this she thing I'm doing is silly. Him. Yeah, it's just all silly. Why not? What's so silly? What I'm doing compared to anyone wearing a dress and holding up a piece of bread and calling it Christ? It's all the same to me. But it's not, too, at the same time, right? Because I'm not claiming, I'm just claiming like a personal tool that can help the personal experience. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you come to me and you go, no, Brittany, I don't believe you. And you're not doing it right. Okay, well, then I'm not doing it right. Go pay someone else. Um, I'm also a bit disturbed by your claim that the world would be a better place if all of the level ones killed themselves. It probably would be, but I have a... <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> Jesus Christ. That is definitely disturbing. I listen, I don't know exactly what a level one is. There's there's two there okay, so I'm assuming that a level five doesn't have to be a particular political ideology. 
if it does, then that's very cult leader esque. Um, where it's like, if you, I think that everybody who doesn't think my particular way needs to kill themselves. What I'm going to assume more is that there's people that she doesn't really value intellectually, and she thinks that they're bad for society, and they should probably be, we would have probably have a better society uh, if they were dead. Um, you know, I get the feeling. I understand where you're coming from because some people can be very ignorant, but I just disagree. I mean, we're a society of different people existing. You know what I mean? Um, streamers are level one. Shit, I should just fucking kill myself right now. Um, I just, <laughs> that's definitely, I just disagree. I mean, I think it's shitty, but, uh, Brady doesn't seem to have a particularly, high value on human life or really high value on human behavior either because she always just says like oh well it's humans are good human um but okay one and he's mine and i'll kill anyone who comes at him because he's mine so he's a piece of shit and he's useless but he's my piece of shit and he's useless what percentage of people do you think comes out it? um i'm also a bit disturbed oh. by your claim that the world would be a better place if all of the level ones killed themselves i mean the world would be a better place if we all ki killed ourselves we, we destroy the planet i mean but we're just we're talking about the human world um probably would be but i have a one and he's mine and i'll kill anyone who comes at him because he's mine so he's a piece of shit and he's useless but he's my piece of shit and he's useless okay what percentage of people do you think are level one very little very few okay what percent if i'm being honest i think like 90 percent are twos and like most likely like over 80 at least definitely over 80 percent maybe up to 90 and then i'd say like ones are probably i don't know a one is a very specifically special person i haven't met very many in my life so Maybe even like 2%, 3%. Oh, Asian people. I'm just kidding. So wait, like real quick question. I, I would ask this question here to Brittany then. Because it seems like there's a level of like intellectual capacity when it comes to what number you are. Where do people that have like low functioning autism and people who have like Down syndrome, um, where do those people fall in place? Are they all ones? Because you would imagine that, you know, people with the Down syndrome, they're smarter than you'd think. But like... You know, where would they fall when it comes to, like, the ability to be introspective and, like, really critically think? They're not super high when it comes to that. So are we saying twos? She's answered that before. What what institutes a two, then, I wonder? And what institutes a one? I'd have to, I'm going to have to look into this. Um, Interesting. Why? I, I, you send me something so I can look into this after after the stream um, or later not after this many. segment. Five, a little bit more fives than that, I think. And then threes and fours, okay. they're scattered. But maybe not. Maybe I'm, but I could be getting my numbers wrong. Realistically, it's probably not even that. It's probably like 80% twos or 60%. But okay. you know what I mean? So a few hundred people are watching this right now, right? Probably somewhere like 500 to 1,000. Yay. I think I have ethical issues with telling 3% of 1,000 people. That's 30 people. That the world would be a better place if they killed themselves. Yeah, so I'm saying. I, I wonder. I wonder if uh, they're level twos just so that she doesn't get like heat, or if they actually fall within this category of level two. You know, I I, I really wonder. Um, no, they were ones. They just think they are. Most of the people, when I say that, I have people writing. I still going, have. I still. I still have ethical issues. Number ones are people who are fully capable of bettering themselves, but refuse to help themselves. Regular people who live in their social bubbles and go to their daily lives are twos. Okay. Interesting. So, like, drug addicts are level ones. Are level ones? So, <laughs> is that what we're saying? With why you're doing it? Um. And I didn't say they should do it. I, I said to be clear. Like I said, I love. Well, you them said. All. You said. You said. You said it would be better if they did. You said they're so useless that they can't. It'd be better so from be a better community perspective, it'd, but it'd be worse on their yes, directly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're telling that. people that they're you're telling people that they're a burden and that the world would be a better place if they killed themselves. Sure. And you're asking me why I think that's unethical? Yeah. Because I think if you're in the position of making yourself some kind of thought leader or even thought uh, opiner on, on, on societal issues okay. and you're broadcasting this out to people, I think the ethical thing to do is to tell people that we need to um, make room for you, that we need to all work together to construct a society that can shoulder the burden of its most useless members. No, thank Not you. a society that tells that tells people to kill themselves. No, thank you. I, <laughs> I mean, listen, I, I gotta, I gotta, I, I gotta, I gotta really think about it. Like, do I think that? I don't know. I mean, pe ones are people who are fully capable of bettering themselves, but refuse to help themselves. But like, in what capacity? Like, would I be a one because I'm a fat person that like refuses to lose weight? You know what I mean? Like, what? I I, I don't really understand. 
how these manifest. I mean, either way, we shouldn't just be killing people because it's such a bad standard that we can pretty much just kill whoever we feel is uh, not somebody who can benefit society. So I don't, I'm not really on board with that fundamentally. But like, I'm trying to understand, like, what are the time? Give me an example of people we're gonna kill. Are we gonna kill people who work hard, but they don't bet? Like, hey, we're gonna kill the truck driver who, um, your fatness. No, because your fatness isn't a burden on society as a whole. It is a burden on society, though. If we're gonna have universal health care, 100% your obesity is a burden on society. Absolutely is. Uh, even now it is because we, we we do sell aspects of Obamacare where like you can't deny somebody um, based on like their pre existing conditions, which means it's going to raise everybody else's premiums. So um, it's like you know, what if this person's like, well, yeah, we got a truck driver and he works real hard and he benefits society a lot, but he he struggles with like an addiction or something. What what makes somebody a one to a point where they'd be okay to just kill those people? I don't understand. I don't want to live in that society. <laughs> Seems inefficient. You just rewind for like two seconds. No, thank you. Of its utmost use. All work together to construct a society that can shoulder the burden of its utmost useless members. No, thank Not you. Not a society that tells, t tells me. Well, by this logic, like, we should just kill everybody with intellectual disabilities that can't take care of themselves. Because like, if you purely logically, they don't have a, they, they're, they're the most useless. They don't really do anything. There's not much they can do. They can enjoy life subjectively. They probably have higher values of life in, in some cases because, you know, but um, they don't really directly benefit people. So we should just kill people with like Down syndrome. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to be like, I'm not trying to like virtue signal or anything. I'm just saying like, this is what this sounds like. What, like, how do you define usefulness to society and all these different things? Um, yeah, it's a little eugenics-y eugenics ish right uh i uh, i i wonder if she takes these things into consideration when when she talks about them well to kill themselves no thank you i don't want to live in that society why seems inefficient <laughs> what the fuck's happening here inefficient yeah so Towards, what do you think what do you think it is that society should be doing that helping less fortunate people Oh, they're um, not less fortunate. For That's it. why ones are special. They're not less fortunate. They're people with every reason, accessibility, okay. sometimes status. So lazy. Whatever. They're not lazy. They're making a choice, and I respect their choices. I respect their well, ability to make a choice. Okay. I don't respect their choice, but I respect okay. their ability to make it. Okay. So I don't infantilize Whatever it is them. You want to call them. I don't victimize what, how, people who what is, it, what, is it, what is it that you think they're stopping society from doing that it's supposed to be doing that it would be inefficient to carry them? Well... We already do, which is why I think society is a little bit more burdened than it should be. We don't know what to do with our ones, but the ones don't make up enough to actually cause. Like twos are primarily the, primarily the reason so the world's the way it is. I'm more so than ones. Like twos are I think so, but let me, okay. I Ones are very specific kinds of people, Max. They are quite literally like you're, we use this uh, example in the Discord a lot. They're in the desert and they're starving. And I'm like, sir, there's a cupcake right next to you. And they go, ooh, but can't eat that cupcake. And I'm like, okay, but there's nothing else around. Here's a cupcake. And they're like, nope, don't eat that cupcake though. And I'm like, so how many times am I going to try to convince this person to eat a cupcake when they don't want to? And how, at what point am I going to go, all right, I respect your decision to not eat that cupcake. So I can go about my day and stop worrying about you. Right? And then right. from a, the societal I level, the I don't think you're society should feel a need to rescue a person who won't eat the cupcake. They can't even, okay. you know what I'm saying? saying they're, will, they're willfully self-destructive. Right. So let them, if they, that's how they want to exist in their one life, I think they have the right to do that. I, just, I, I, want, I need examples of what, like, what a drug addict, I just need examples of this. For okay. help, and they're genuine in that desire, then I can understand people reaching out, mostly falling on the Because like no, but there's there's not a person that exists that would be starving, hungry, and not eat a cupcake. Like those people don't exist. Like I, I just don't, I, I, like seriously, like if you were going to die or eat a cupcake, like these people, they're, 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 these people really do not exist that wouldn't eat the cupcake. So this example is not really very good. And if there are, they're massive outliers to the point where it's not even um, like measurable on a scale. 50% Twitter? Yeah, true. Uh, so like what I need a real world example of a person like is it a drug addict who has a lot of money and doesn't get off drugs should we kill them I'm, I'm very confused of their close family unit or friends more or less here's my question mm -hmm. you're saying that it would be inefficient to help those people no 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 inefficient to manda make it mandatory for society to bear the burden of those people that's okay it would be inefficient to make it mandatory for society to bear the burden of helping those people mm -hmm. inefficient the word implies that society is trying to do something yes and that that would get in the way of what society is trying to do right my question for you is what is it that you think society is trying to do um uh, exist cohesively like smoothly as possible as smooth as we can get i mean i, I would just answer that i think that society well should exist to propagate more like society more human society like further us for as, as long as humanly possible 
um, which means like empathy would have to be like a pretty big factor at that. Okay. That should be their goal. I hit crazy eyes there. Try to exist in a world where we're causing the least amount of friction and, and um, unnecessary suffering. Unnecessary, but sometimes life is also suffering. So ones in some way play a role because they help humble the twos and the threes and the fours and maybe even get us to fives because they allow us to see a parts of ourselves. Like the ones I've interacted with are quite fascinating humans, but they're extremely exhausting because they're, they don't have a point to them. They're goalless. It's very interesting, but they're very usually smart, which is even more frustrating. So I think that's the frustration with the ones a little bit. <laughs> okay. Can you give me an, an example of how society carries the burden for L1? Well, they well usually ones blend really well. So you would only know it in your direct family unit. So let's say you have somebody in your direct family unit, um, which just everywhere they go, they're a burden, an energy vampire. They won't participate. Let's say you have someone you're like, hey, I really need you to do this thing. And again, they just, for all, for <coughs> no reason, that's apparent, for no logical reason, they're just like, nope, don't want to do it. And you're like, okay. So at some point, you're not reliable as a fellow human being. You're not consistent. You're not there. You don't have values or morals in which you, you know, derive sort of your action from so i can't get double guess or understand what you're about to do so ones are people that they don't fit into the mold they don't help in a community way which burdens the community because now the community has to do I, something I get, with them i get i get the definition i'm asking you can you give me a specific example it doesn't have to be a real example but a specific example of yeah. how society shoulders the burden for a one a singular one I, i'm trying to figure out what it is you mean when you're talking about shouldering the burden like how does that play out in like an actual situation um, okay. Well, okay. I'm going to define community as like units of large groups of people that socialize. Sure. So I know a one who within his community structure has impacted over 200 people because of his inability to get a job, function, work within social norms and slash want to participate while at the same time claiming, you know, he's doing great and everything's perfect. It's kind of like we're working with a delusion as well as a mm -hmm. reality factor. So the way I've helped this community make peace with the situation to the best of my ability, though it's still limited, is that this is who he is and we have to respect his choices or his ability to make these choices without feeling like it's about us. But they shoulder the burden of his outbursts, his depression, his inability. Somebody has to pay for him. They can't just let him be homeless because now it's a, sh it's a burden on society. So his family has to up the bill for him. You know what I'm saying? So like people, somebody always okay, has to so carry the burden. Thing Paying for his housing, and when you say, uh, you're saying emotionally deal with the impact of his outbursts. Yes, so like he'll get the law involved or utilize, like misuse like police time or misuse court cases or constantly threaten to sue people. So like in those ways, it's constantly just like a, oh my gosh, like bro, there's no, no reason or rhyme for it. It's just complete madness, but it's not insanity. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, so a more, a more permissive view such as mine would probably label this person as mentally ill, but you're saying that it is yeah, uh, maybe. will. It's a, it's a willful choice to be mm -hmm. this way. Yeah, I'm saying I, I make the difference because I think most twos who are mentally ill could have the same description of this person and not be a one to me. Because I think if you're the, like, I've been manic. I suffer from, it's been through almost three years. I've been good. But in the past, I used to have, like, severe mania and, like, a lot of depression and anxiety because I have borderline. And so one of the things that made me, it made me realize, like, oh, I'm a different Britney when I'm triggered than, than I am, like, this Britney talking to you today. But I also know I was never a one, even in my worst situations, because I was never willfully doing anything with a great intent. It was always because I thought I had to, versus the people I've talked to, they've really made it clear that, nope, this is just what I'm going to do. And I'm like, but there's... Right. So you think if you, if we talk to this person right now, and we said, are you choosing to inflict yourself, your pain, and uh, inflict this pain, and... um take money from these people unnecessarily. I feel like whoever they're describing, it sounds like someone she just doesn't like, but like, even if you agree that you don't care if that person like lives or dies, because from what it sounds like, I don't care if shit, they did live or die. It's different from saying they should all be dead. Those are two very different things. Um, I wonder if she's taking her experience with this person here and she's like applying that uh, in a way that like, I don't know, projecting that person onto all these ones. Like, I really don't like this person, and I wish they were dead, so it would be fine if we killed all people that were like them in some capacity. Really? Are you choosing to do like, this? Like, the one is just Jacob. I mean, I don't know if what the person's name is, but like, we're going to call him Jacob. It's just, that's just Jacob. We want Jacob to die, kind of thing, you know? Free will, you think he would say yes? They might deflect and say that other people brought me to making this decision, but ultimately they would say they made the decision. But they'd say they had no choice, but they had to make it. Something like that. Okay, well, so that would that you don't you just don't agree. You think that he is making a choice, and he would say that he's not that. I've dealt with that enough, ultimately. Yeah, I think I've dealt like mentally ill people can be ones too, but I've dealt with a lot of mentally ill people, even ones who are undergoing psychosis. It's totally different than what these people are doing. It's different. It's completely different, Max. It's like they're really just making a decision and looking you right in the eye and saying, "Yep, that's what I'm going to do." And you're like, "Sir, it's not <laughs> this even." Is, this is definitely a rough conversation. <laughs> unreasonable, and so in those ways, you can't even because they're smart. They're not dumb. Like the ones I've met have not been dumb people. They've been more than capable it just, people. It seems un it just seems like. Like impossible. It just seems like these these are people. Well, it just seems like ones are people that you hate. 
Yeah. Um, and, and that you don't have empathy for, and you think they are worthless. I, so, okay, what do you think should be well, in this situation you're describing? What do you think? What do you think should happen? What do you think should be done? He should be put out on the street. No, I think what's happening is fine. His family shouldering the burden of his survival, and they're. Well, you said that you think you said that you don't think we should shoulder the, the burden for once. Well, I put an asterisk on that video and that said I don't really think we should be killing once in case nobody saw that. But I do, I do not think people should be genocide. But, but he, when he asked, when he pressed her, it's not like she said like oh, I was exaggerating. She agreed with it, so it seems like she's walking back a little bit. Citing anybody, I think what? that's really silly. But I don't think. Well, I, why? Why not? Why? Oh, I'm kind of like yeah. anti- Kill, killing all the ones would be the most efficient. Only if we were fighting for the larger community. But I'm a selfish individualist, and so I want that my one. I want him to be mine. I want I, he's my like I'll he's fine right now. He's taken care of. But like I okay, but, I would but rather generally, have him you, than, you, if your goal is efficient, ruthless efficiency. But it's my goal isn't use- my goal isn't Brittany's goal isn't. I'm just saying societies might be. I'm saying that's why I'm saying we're all lying. When people go, oh, I want an efficient society. No, you don't. When people say I want a peaceful society, no, you don't. To have a peaceful society means it's, to have an unpeaceful society. So what society. do you what do you think should happen? It's, it sounds like. You're saying it would be better if they killed themselves, but then you're saying that you don't advocate for them to kill themselves. So again, well, it just it feels like you're it feels like you're te- you're saying no. You think I'm a person who believes? That- well, I imagine if everybody advocated for the, or said that that person should kill themselves, that would probably push that person to kill themselves. But okay. But I have the answer for masses of people, and I don't. I'm saying I don't. I'm saying when I say these things, I don't mean them because it's outrageous to think I could know what's good for all of humanity, including the ones. What an outrageous statement to make. And yet you've made it. Well, I made it, but I put a little like caveat and I corrected myself over time. <laughs> the levels is a living entity. I've corrected my language. I speak in black okay, and white so this, terms. And so I'm a bad communicator. Well, you made this sometimes. video like a year ago, mm-hmm. but you're saying yeah, you're saying that, that your because stance on ones has changed. It hasn't changed. My language around it has. So people understand me better. But when I say it the way I say it, some people understand it. People, you know what I'm saying? I've had to curtail my language so other people understand I'm not talking about them. Because I always You think sound like Nick Fuentes talking about Jews. I don't watch enough of him to know what that means. I've only seen him with Destiny a few times. You sound I... like a polite neo-Nazi talking about Jews. Um, I guess, but I really... <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, I'm not saying what should be done about them. Who knows what should be done? And, you know, I I, some, I have a friend who's a Jew, so I wouldn't blah, blah, blah. But, you know, they're a drain on society. Yeah, but I don't really believe... Based. Like, I don't even... I think, like, when men go to war, it's stupid. Like, I think it's all petty and silly. I think what I think doing? what we're doing is because we think we have to, or we're pushing into corners where we feel like we must. But with most ones, their parents shoulder the burden, or they become homeless, which I think is fine for them. I don't think it's wrong for them to. I don't think homelessness is necessarily wrong. I think it's a state of being. You know, I was technically homeless legally for like. A so year. she's saying we should kill homeless people. I'm a little confused because then she also said before, she's like, well, I don't think we should actually kill them. But that was like five minutes after he pressed her, and then if it seems like maybe I'm wrong. It feels like maybe he backed her into a corner where she felt like she had to be like, well, I was just kidding, you know? Uh, could be wrong. A year and a half, but I was traveling around the U.S. in a trailer. It's hardly homeless. But it's the same, uh, like, it's a, you know, okay. I don't like the idea that the idea of this person being homeless is the worst when the it is his own, truly his own doing versus other people who suffer from homelessness. Maybe it's because of addiction or mental health. Some people just pick paths, and I think we have to radically accept them. And versus okay. pretending like, no, a human could never be this useless. A person would always choose to be useful. Okay, well, not in my experience. <laughs> Someone said Jewish people were one to three percent of the German population in the early 1930s. Are you saying that because she said that like two percent of the people uh, they would <laughs> that she would like one two percent of like our population are ones? Is that why you're saying that? Um, it's just okay. a pause. Well, my uh, my ethical qualms with creating a model of society that either explicitly or implicitly states that um, useless people, which to me sound like mentally ill people, mentally ill people yeah. who you you have deemed are choosing to be mentally ill, should be killed either by their own hands or by somebody else's or just by starvation or yeah, I yeah, in I the just, desert. I feel like you're putting more passion uh, into my statement than I felt at the time. It's just like, yeah, like even a, even a dis, even a dispassionate statement of this is uh, it's almost more disturbing to me. Well, no, because I think it's <laughs> denying what we are. We're an evolved. We're most likely an evolved animal over so species over like an evolved animal species over time, right? Uh, we're probably, yeah, I can see what. Okay, yeah, this whole human argument does seem to be a little bit rooted in like I could say something really shitty. We're just people. Like, yeah, we are just people, but that doesn't mean we should give in to, like, our base desires, right? Like, that, this argument of we're just people is like, yeah, it's okay to kill, like, all fucking, I don't know, indigenous people or something. I could sit here and say, like, I don't really care if, let's say there's, like, a drug addict in my life who you've tried, like, five times. I don't have anybody in this in my life, but let's say there's somebody, like, a drug addict in my life, and I've tried five times to help them, and every single time they relapse and they go to rehab, and we can even acknowledge that, like, rehab isn't exactly the best uh, thing. A lot of times it's very focused on religion, and that's not exactly the, the best uh, for everybody. 
But like you've given them every opportunity, every financial opportunity, every to do everything, and they just keep relapsing. And I said, I don't care if they die. They're like that's fine. I don't think that's an issue. But that's different from saying like a whole category of people like that should die. You know what I mean? Like it's just a very different thing. It seems why personalize? Like I don't care if someone like that would die. But does that mean that I want them to die? Like, no. I mean, I don't think that's the right way to go. I mean, be, ideally, we could figure something out. But I don't know. The way that she advocates for it is, is it's bizarre. Not gifts from God. We're probably not descendants of some fairy tale. We're probably just an animal mm -hmm. species with an evolved consciousness, which means that we're operating within the mechanism of our own evolution. So, of course, there would be animals that would be evolved over time to be sort of like not helpful to the pack. But I don't think the pack should kill the animal. I think the animal should be able to just be the animal, like be yourself. And then the pack should avoid it if they want to. But some of us I have choose. ethical qualms with the way you've presented this and the way Fair. you're presenting it right now. Yeah, because I think this is like kind of this is like the third retraction. At first, it was like, yeah, I think that we should kill them because of uh, because it would be like ethically efficient or something like that. And then it was like, well, I didn't really mean that we should actually kill them. And now it's like, well, I just think that we should avoid them. It's like okay. it seems like she feels backed into a corner and, and her, her perspective is constantly changing. I'm sorry, you're implying that it would be good. I and mean, you explicitly stated it would be good for people who you think are useless to die. Also, your tone changes quite a bit when you talk about these ones. It, start, it sounds like you're ranting. It switches from a inspiring philosophical journey towards self-actualization kind of language, self-help guru language that I, sounds familiar. It starts to sound like ranting about useless people who are vampires and who should kill themselves. And it's, well, it I don't think they hateful. should kill themselves. And it's, it's a, I don't know what you need me okay, to change you said it, you, Well, you said, it, you said it would be better if they did. Uh, so if you're a goal you for society... About these, when you start ranting about these people, it's kind of scary. Okay. I don't know why you're afraid. I'm not... It's not like I have power, nor do I think genocide is correct. You do have, you do have power. I have a you little absolutely bit of power. Have. Well, I mean, the question isn't, do you have the power to kill these people? The question is, if you did have the power, would you? And that seems to be... It seemed to be, at first, you saying yes. Um, so that would be the scarier part. Power. There are people There are people watching right now who who... Insane people. If you uh, acted on those words, it's every insane. person, every person who kills themselves mm -hmm. that I've ever known of, thought they were a one. Yeah, that sucks. But that's also what humans do. They take what you say and they put it within the understanding they have of their own reality, and then I think they it's go. It's unethical for you to reaffirm. I feel the bathroom. But what I will say is that, um, so like as a content creator, especially, and I think that this might be an issue with Brittany, is when you're a content creator, you do need to be more careful with what you say. There's two aspects to what you say. There's what you say. And then there's um, what people hear, right? And of course, at the end of the day, you're not always going to be able to say everything in a way where everybody will 100% understand exactly what you're saying in the correct way. Um, but you have to do your best. And so like, if I make a joke and 90% of people or 95% of people, um, if most people understand that I'm joking within context and I'm not serious and some people misinterpret it, that's one thing. But like, we're sitting in a situation where she's, She's really advocated for these people to kill themselves. And so imagine like you are a one watching and she's like, wow, maybe I, or they're like, wow, maybe I should kill myself because Brittany said that I'm useless. And it's like, there's a, there seems to be a little bit of a um, lack of uh, empathy when it comes to these, this framing. Give me one sec. I'll be right back. Actually, give me three seconds. Huh.
Wow. Let me tell you something. If only you guys had a pee cam. Holy shit. That was a very long piss. That was a very long piss. Okay, back to the story. Firm the beliefs of suicidal people that they're a burden and that we'd be better off without them because I don't think it's true and I don't think it's right to say that. I think that's fair. I think suicidal people, maybe I give them more credit because I was one for many years and I know that deep down that they know that they offer something to the world and I think that <sighs> if they really thought they were ones, they probably wouldn't kill themselves. I think ones are less likely to kill themselves. I feel like Brittany has a lot of aspects in her life like mental health issues and suicidal thoughts at some point and she projects the way she felt during those things onto everybody else and she uses that as a way to be non-empathetic but to say that like all suicidal people are the same or all people with mental health issues are the same that's just a fundamentally ignorant statement i mean it's the same thing as being like all black people are the same all white people are the same all jewish people are the same it's it's a it's a very closed off ignorant worldview because very different people experience different things differently um, so like, I wonder if she really feels that way or if it's more in line with her, uh, using it as an excuse, like something to fall back on to be like, I wasn't wrong. You know? Um, so I think cause it, it, I don't, I don't really, I don't know. I don't know if she's using it as like a, as a shield. Or if she actually feels that way. Or I don't know if she's using it as a shield or she actually just feels that way. Yeah, like what I, I said before. Um, well. Do it because they believe it when they didn't even have to believe it in the first place. Like to, to commit suicide, that is a cry for help. And then I think that those people should know that that's not what I'm saying. That you are you don't have to kill yourself for the world. The world's not that interesting. You should stay alive for you. The world is often the reason we want to die. And the world's not even that interesting in relation to our whether or not we should survive. But ones in relation to other people. You think she's making it up as she goes? Maybe. She does seem to be kind of shifting her perspective continuously. Usually are also the reasons why people might kill themselves. Because they tend to be the people in your lives who don't know how to uplift a community member. Unlike most people, we try to uplift our suicidal population because I don't think they want to die. I think people who are suicidal, much like myself, we didn't want to die. We just didn't have... Hold on a second. ...lives who don't know how to uplift a community member. Unlike most people, we try to uplift our suicidal population because I don't think they want to die. I think... Is she saying that as a society, we uplift suicidal people because we don't think they actually want to die? I, if that's what she's saying, I disagree. We don't uplift people who are suicidal because we think they don't actually want to die. We do it because we don't think that they should kill themselves. We try to give them a reason not to die. Um, it's very weird. Because like kind of the kind of the subtext of what she's saying is that like, hey, and listen, there are people who who threaten to kill themselves or even cut themselves uh, as a form of attention. But that's you're saying that all people who are suicidal are just doing it as an attention ploy. That's the that's the vibe I'm getting here. I think people who are suicidal, much like myself, we didn't want to die. Oh, we just didn't have a tool. Person. And I'm saying I'm trying to offer people a tool because it was a tool that stopped me from wanting to die every day. But it might not work for everybody. And none of my tools seem to work for ones. But you just said that you didn't actually want to die before and that was your excuse for in my opinion ignorantly suggesting ones should kill themselves hmm. so i would be amazed if somebody could help them mm. because that would be really great i really worry about my one but i also know that if he died a lot of people would be relieved he's quite a burden Jesus Christ. I'm just like he's got he's he just got like a Batman look on his face. <laughs> the fuck? This is killing me, dude. <laughs> I wasn't raised in an environment where people who had disabilities I would have just waited for him to speak. I just give him a chance to, to speak. These were a burden. They were just people. I wasn't raised in an environment where I think he's just really reflecting. Your mental health made you a problem. Not really. I wasn't raised in a household that ever thought of anyone as a burden in that regard so when i speak i'm never even thinking about those people i'm thinking about perfectly reasonable people i think you're people. the burden and and you're I think you're raising a household where you were made to feel like a burden yeah sure absolutely i have a lot on my shoulders i always have and that's why that runs a burden okay. yeah okay <laughs> what is happening here <laughs> 
there's no way where you can say you think one should kill themselves where you're not also saying that you think on some level that when you're a burden you deserve to die and it just it just seems like you're that hate is um you talking about yourself and, and, and somehow excusing the way you've been treated maybe i think that in recovery there is a moment in a person. I don't know. It sounded more like, may, more like, and maybe I'm wrong. It sounded more like she would threaten suicide as an attention ploy, which is, you know, I'm not criticizing her for that. And then she's projecting that experience of other people who have those types of thoughts onto other people. Like she's projecting her experience onto other people. That's what I got more than anything else. This life in which they are a burden in a way that is annoying. But I don't think that's a majority of your time spent. There's an episode of Sex in the City for all of you uncultured swine in which Carrie has broken up with Big and cannot stop talking about her love for Big. And then eventually her girlfriend says to say, Carrie, you've talked enough about this man. Go to therapy. And at that point, she becomes a burden. At first, it's her girlfriend supporting her. Then you become a burden. Ones are a very special case in which they, they don't have any issues. They can be perfectly fine. And I know you're saying it's mental health, but I'm saying I disagree, but you could be correct and I could be wrong. But maybe... I think that you... I think this is... I feel like you're just... Talking about how your parents talk to you. What do you mean? I don't get that feeling. It just at all. sounds like you come from this very unforgiving, unempathetic environment where you're mocked and belittled, and oh, your struggles are your struggles that's, are that's seen. That's loving as a, mocking. No, 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 no. Current. No, no. My parents. We, our family. Like we're like destiny mocking. It's love. Like when they say "fuck you," you're like "ah, fuck you too, bitch." Like we have a lot of fun. Like I came from a pretty. Um, I came from a pretty strict household too. Um. Like my whole family is like it's pretty strict, right? But like there, there's never a lack of value on people with mental health issues. I never heard. I don't think those things, things, two things, always go hand in hand. Destiny, Destiny, Destiny can be pretty cutting when he's mocking. Yes, we all can. But I'm saying my family's self-aware enough that when we do this, you don't think my mom knows I'm mocking her when I call her a two? Come now. What's the point of engaging this behavior if we can't sort of like look at each other like we all think we're wrong or right? That's the point is to be no, open I think and safe I think, about I it. I think that there's, I think that there's a viciousness being exchanged in the guise of sometimes joking. Sometimes. Well, here's the thing, right? Sometimes. Wait, I have to fix my light because it's oh. blinking. I can still hear okay. you if you want to keep talking or you can wait. It's up to you. I can wait if you would like. Give you a Actually, let me pee. This is a great time to pee. Guys, right, everyone I'm going been... to skip through them peeing. Just Small. like. All right. Well, that's a long pee, Brittany. Incredible. Did this level in jail for? It's a long pee, Brittany, and I have diabetes. Okay, so that's saying something. Introspective people, they basically choose to be unhappy. And then fives are the top, and they're the is going to do. I've broken some law. What you're talking about here and there throughout what my life. Level? I'm not going to say I've never, I'm not going to say I've never broken the law, but I assume that what you're talking about is laws around like child pornography or <laughs> child abuse or, uh, are you talking to me or to your audience? What's happening with this fucking stream? Holy shit. Audience right now. My audience, my audience. Okay, I would I'm saying that I've never I've never broken any of the laws that I'm assuming that you're trying to get me arrested for. Um yeah. I've been muted. It's like the joy that my audience gets to I'm a, I just, I don't want to say I've never broken a law because it's not true, but I, I, overall, I'm an extremely law abiding citizen. I'm very pro, pro. I once stole a ring. Uh, it was a dollar. It was a Snorlax. And this was when I was a young boy and I was so guilty that I ended up giving it back. You know, I was, just, it was, I was too destroyed <laughs> from stealing a Snorlax ring. It fucked me up, bro. <laughs> It really fucked me up. Put me in a bad headspace. You know what I mean? It really fucks you up. Wow. That oh, dude wow. is just trolling. Yeah, yeah, probably. <sighs> I'm a man of... Uh... I stole something from Walmart a while back for my wife. It was a nice pair of Harry Potter sleepy time pants. And I just took them. I think it's because I was going to pay for them, but there was no scan on there. And I just wanted to leave. So I just took them. I didn't really care. <laughs> Okay, yeah. guys, my chat, my voice is. I did return the ring. Yeah, here. I, I, I told my, mom, I dropped the ring on the floor. Check this out. I, we went into a payless. This is how old I am. Payless was still around. Um, I went into a payless. I put the ring on the floor when nobody was looking, and then I picked it up, like just to go through the act of like, oh, I found this. <laughs> it's like I think this belonged to the store we were just at, as I told my mom. 
Yeah, Tell yeah, me. we hear you. Yeah, okay. I want to be able to minimize this chat. I believe in laws and, and science. Great. I love you that. Know, ethics. Uh, um, okay, so yeah, I think you're projecting your own sense of your family making you feel useless onto this level system, and now you're telling that these when you when you yourself are in need, when you yourself are desperate, I think you're made to feel like a burden by your family, and you're trying to. I I, I just disagree with that assertion. You guys already know. I think that it's that's different from that. But okay, the image of society in your in your family's image, which is that they're nice, they're warm, mm -hmm. they're understanding until you really need help. And then they are telling you that it's your fault and your burden. Nah, they're great in and every that, crisis. Yeah, I just don't believe you. Well, in every crisis, they've always been there, though. That's how uh, I know I they're the legit he, I ones. think he's wrong on this They're one. really good. They were there during my stalker. They were there during all my suicides. They were there when I needed them. My family knows how to like stand their ground. But also over time, because I got therapy, I was able to give my family skills that we didn't have before. So I feel that, totally. I think growing up, that might have been more accurate. But I just think you're, like, you've maybe never even... I don't know. Like, I, oh, I, wait, did she just admit that he was right? Also, over time, because I got therapy, I was able to give my family skills that we didn't have before. So I feel that, totally. I think growing up, that might have been more accurate, but I just think... Oh, wait. <laughs> okay, maybe I was wrong. It sounds like she just admitted it. She's like, maybe growing up, that might have been more accurate. Well, yeah, that's a pretty big phase of development is you're growing up. Um, so if they're instilling these ideas into you as you're growing up, of course it's going to lend to you you know having a negative experience but her saying that she went to therapy and then she was able to give them skills it sounds like she went to therapy and was able to educate them on a better way to deal with her uh which is a good thing you know because like i needed to go to therapy at one point uh my mother uh, you know my mother used to hit me a lot um very poggers <laughs> but like the therapist like you gotta stop doing that she's like oh shit <laughs> that's pretty much all it was um she didn't hit me like that much you know what i mean but anyway um yeah, but it, uh, he actually might have been right about it. Maybe I guess he knows more about her than I do. Probably because he obviously watches some of her content, and educates himself on her before they watch. So uh, interesting that he seems to have gotten it right. Yeah, mom, dom, you're, dommy, like, mommy. You've maybe yeah. never even. I don't know. Like I, I, see, I hear what you're saying, but it's just not accurate either. It just doesn't reflect. That's fine. I yeah, I'm not trying to convince you. I'm trying to make sense out loud of how somebody who seems uh, like a pretty kind, Thanks. um, well-intentioned person. Yeah. Can say something that makes them sound like Hitler. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll so tell you. casually. I'll tell you. I've lived my, a life, right? Like if you meet right. enough well, people, come no, on. No, that's not. I'm oh, trying. I'm, let me fuck. That's that's the problem. He's he's a six. I don't even get it. I'm only a one. I'm actually gonna take my own life after this. Can one. finish. My explanation is to myself, and it's, I'm just telling you so you know what I'm thinking. Okay. Is that you identify with these ones, and you are out to like prove to yourself that you're not a one mm -hmm. because I think your family has made you feel like you were and has made you feel like a useless burden at times when you were um, falling apart. And also there's no, there's no, there's no way anybody ever in any situation can tell me like, yeah, I tried to kill myself a bunch of times, but my parents are really great. No. Well, it's not no. exactly that. Black if your parents are really great, if your parents are really great, you wouldn't try to kill yourself. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I'm sure that there are, I mean, it's possible. I mean, when you go to a therapist, they'll really root you down to like your mother or your father. Right. Um, so may I get what he's saying? Maybe um, I'm, I'm sure that there's a world. There, there's scenarios where like the mother and father are great. It's just like some kind of societal pressure that that weighs on people. But okay, right. But I think that I would, was I would I would even say definitionally, if there was one, if you asked me what is a good per parent versus a bad parent, that would almost be if you if you kept digging and making me answer question after question, I would say if your kid tries to kill themselves, you have seriously fucked up. Maybe. Yeah. Um. Hold on, am I like really frozen? No, okay. Well, I think the dilemma with that is that it's just a little, it doesn't um, take into consideration their life journey or how they were raised or the bubbles that they understand or how they understand it. Have, uh, everybody's got a all. reason for being a terrible parent. I'm not yeah, saying that, I think that my they're, parents, they're, they're yeah. also children too. I would say my but. parents have been bad at parenting, but they were never really bad people. My parents are great, but I still feel that way sometimes. Well, I mean, I think we've all contemplated like t killing ourselves at one point. I think it's like the seriousness of that thought how close are you really to that thought? You know what I mean? That we're more than taught. We're talking about more than anything else. You know? Right. I guess. I just feel like that's like, once you have kids, that's uh, yeah. the measure of a man. That's yeah. How you, how you treat your kids. 
true. Yes, but my parents never treated me with like malicious intent. It was always because they thought they were saving me, which is why I think saving people is the road. Well, yeah, but I think that at the end of the day, like you keep saying, you don't have to. It's you know, your life experience can make you a terrible parent, terrible parent, and maybe you just don't understand that you're a bad parent. Maybe you think you're doing the right thing. There's lots of things here. It's like the path to hell is paving good intentions. I think when you try to save people, you most likely will drown them in that process. The path to being a Nazi cult leader is also paved in good intentions. Exactly. Yeah. What do you mean exactly? That just proves him right. I'm so, I'm so confused. Okay. All right. All right. All right. A lot of awkward silences. Just want you guys to know that the video is not frozen. Um. Little awkward sounds here. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. This is about me. Do you <laughs> do you like me or do you dislike me at this moment? Um, I have mixed feelings about you. Okay. On some level, I like you. Hmm. On some level, I um. I think you were ready for me to be like angry at you. I think you weren't as ready for me to be uh uh scared of you. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so. The frustration, I think, is easier for us to kind of deal with, but I I'm unnerved by you, and I think that neither of us knows exactly how to handle that. Is that why you messaged me yesterday? No, I I was angry at you yesterday because oh. I was like, just it just felt like you're being very dismissive of me. I feel like I'm, I'm trying so hard to say what I mean, and uh, like in that consent conversation, I feel like I feel like uh, Stephen was writing me off All right. and saying, so like, "Well, think, no, you got to be." I really think I have a Britney simp in the chat now, but I think somebody that. Um is from Britney stream uh, from what I know about her her parents are from Iran and they have a very very bad view of gay people she knew she was gay at a young age so she feels that her BPD stems from feeling insecure in the environment and that she was inherently a bad person there's a lot more uh, to this but that's a very brief summary okay careful with how you make these takes and blah, blah 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 and then two weeks later he tweets out the exact same fucking thing that I said put in an even worse way about a specific person sorry and I fucking like uh Stephen was writing me off, and said, uh, like in that consent conversation of me. I feel like I'm, I'm trying so hard to say what I mean, and uh, like in that consent conversation, I feel like I feel like uh, Stephen was writing me off and saying, like, well, no, you got to be really careful with how you make these takes and blah 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 blah. And then two weeks later, he tweets out the exact same fucking thing that I said, put in an even worse way about a specific person. And then all of a sudden, he's on the other end of the debate defending what I just fucking said on his stream that he was saying was too far out there. So I'm like. Well, it sounds like, uh, you know, well, that's usually how changing minds works, right? It, it takes a while to change. So I guess uh, you got you got through to Destiny. You, you you got him to change his mind on a particular topic. Is that what they're talking about, where he had that really uh, very based take about uh, sexual assault? That was uh, quite rough. Is that what he's referring to? Uh, I, like, what? And then at the same time, you're watching the stream and you're like, you're like, no, this is blah, blah. You're like rolling your eyes. And I, I felt I felt like a little ganged up on by the two of you watching it. And it was uh, it was annoying to me. Is there any part of that that's also oh. exciting? <laughs> um, a good argument Shit. can be exciting. But the problem with that stream with Steven was that he wasn't really arguing with me. He pushed back a little bit, and then he would sort of just like drop it and say like, you know the thing where he's like, okay. Yeah. And so I'm like, yeah, so um, I would like to fight him about that. Sure. Uh, except now I think maybe we're on the same side of the argument. Mm. I also think he just doesn't want to talk about it anymore. Um, but yeah, fighting, I enjoy no, I fighting with Steven. Um, <laughs> also, I think that being on Twitch probably uh, made him a little bit more cautious. Yeah. Probably, probably be different now. Um, but no, I don't, like, also when I'm watching you, watching him, and then, like, you're, you're watching, like, after he finishes saying. You want to, you saying you want me to delete this message? Is that what you're saying? I don't know how to do that. I'm just going to time you out. Okay. Just because I don't know how to do it. Something I'm about to respond, you're like, pause, and you're like, yeah, see, this is what is so great about Steven and what, like, Mr. Girl doesn't understand. Like no, it's not exciting. I just feel like uh, I feel like you didn't understand what I was saying. I like you were choosing to not understand what I was saying because you're a fucking one. No, I just I just felt I felt it doesn't. It just feels like a, it feels like a dream where like you can't talk. Like yeah, I I uh, like I get I get why why Stephen jumps on panels when like he, people are misrepresenting him or saying something or, or uh, and he just calls in and it's like no fuck you that's not what I'm saying. Like he has the ability to just like have his voice like like in, inject it yeah. like that when he wants to. I don't have that. So so like no, it's not exciting. It just feels like you're like. Like I'm trying to be as like open and honest as I can, and then you're, you make a stream called "Is Mr. Girl Like a Real Person?" Yeah. And I'm like like this. <laughs> <laughs> Is Mr. Girl a real person? Incredible. People just resubscribe. Hey, thank months. you so much for the resub, brother. I'm just gonna do a couple of alerts. This will take two minutes. Um, Jesus Christ. 
You've given 72 gift subs Barbarian to China? Barbarian be gifted Mile to a subscription. Thank you so much for the sub, bro. Barbarian be gifted a tier 1 sub to Mile um, 2. They have given 72 I'm gift subs in the channel. Wow, incredible. Yeah, you get more of these monkeys. Mother here. of dog guns just hey, subscribe. Thank you so much for the sub, brother. Okay. It's like when you can, and then you're, you make a stream called Is Mr. Girl Like a Real Person? I mean, it is kind of funny, though. But also, it's probably like a little clickbaity. You know what I mean? Um... Yeah. I don't like like it's like when people No, I don't I don't like it. Okay. I'm I'm here for that. When I first saw you, yeah. I you can understand I think why people do think you're a troll, right? Because in the same way I say we should like maybe one should die, you sound like that's other people. And I'm saying that's not what I'm saying, and you're saying that's not what I'm saying. And that's why I want to know if you're like me. Or no, but if you you're literally not like said me. that. You, but I but I, I also I, put a correction I say things in the video. That I actually, I, but I put a correction no, on that video same. and I've said it over and over again. I understand. I didn't you said realize it people in this would conversation. take. Well, no, but like again, for the efficiency of a community that's goal is cohesiveness or less. But whatever that's the point. preface you're making you before, maybe know. these people should kill themselves. I am unnerved by your statement, and you are not clarifying things in the way that you you're think you are. You're unnerved because the you things don't that I say, people. the things, the things that I say, you that people either. think I'm joking about, I actually mean, and then I just stand by what I said, and I yeah. can explain what I meant. But I, I literally mean the things I'm saying. Well, so what's frustrating is when I say something I actually do mean, yeah. and people are like, nobody would say that, so he must be joking. Right. I'm so like, no, lots of other people also think the same thing I'm saying. I'm not joking. Okay. You're just wasting my fucking time. Okay. I I can feel that frustration, but I just don't know why you care. Um, you don't know why I care. Well, in that, I, I would imagine that because I do, it doesn't sound like what she said was particularly like if somebody said that to me, I'd be like, okay, whatever. But I know that. I'm pretty sure Mr. Girl has like an issue with the way that people perceive him when it comes to like being a pedophile or the different like his takes on pedophile. I'm not calling him one just for context. And so it's probably more of a, of a situation where he's just kind of constantly being criticized. And why did that look wider? Anyway, constantly being criticized. And so like he's more sensitive to criticism. Like I remember when I made, remember I made that old enough to bleed, old enough to breed joke on TikTok. And, you know, I ended it with thank you very much, Andre Lopez. It was a, potential you know somebody who was uh, allegedly sub at a 14 year old to 23 but i remember people like took it out of context and then they just kept dogging on me and then i became like sensitive to criticism because like it's frustrating when everybody's calling you like a fucking pedophile for nothing you know it's like insane um that's probably why he got offended by it, i would imagine case it was the person who gave me my platform mm -hmm. who his almost all of my audience is contained as a subset of his audience so he has a large degree of control over how i am perceived he had just started doing streams with you and in some of and then so then some of a lot of those same people who were my fans are also now your fans so we have a lot of overlap and so then you are making a video about how maybe i just don't mean anything i say it's frustrating to have people talking about you in a volume that is louder than your own voice or as loud as your own voice and you have no control over what they're saying and the things they're saying aren't fucking true it's just frustrating. Most videos about me are not made by me. The, the videos that have the most views are not made by me. The video about me that has the most views is made by Moist Critical or Penguin Zero. There's a video with like 5 million views about him c calling me a pedophile. Yeah. And really? Interesting. I'm kind of curious. I might want to watch that. Um, did somebody link that to me? Um... That like a real thing? Interesting. I'm very curious about that. I'd like to see that. I can, and it's like I, I, you can add up all the videos I've ever done and all the streams I've ever been on, including Destiny streams, and they still don't add up to five million views. So like, mm -hmm. it's very it's very frustrating to be dismissed by, you know, other people. I, I imagine so that that he probably didn't label the it. Like that, like, oh, Mr. Girl said it was probably like, this guy's the worst penis sucker in the world. You know what I mean? Like, that's usually how he does his videos. Here, uh, I might take a look at that a little later. Uh, I'd also have to watch his cuties review. What's it called? Cuties is worse than you think. Okay, yeah, see, it's not called the same thing. I might have to, I'm gonna have to watch Mr. Girl. Can you send me Mr. Girl's like original cuties review uh, also so I could watch that and then voice critical and see what we, you, cause I, that's where you, I'd imagine you'd get the, your, your original level of education from. Would be that. So if you can send me that, I'll, I'll I will love you in a parasocial way. Now you're putting me in a weird position where I can't decide if I should walk you through the conversation or if I should just say the blunt thing that I want to say. But if I do go too blunt, then I haven't set you up to accept the information. Or what do I do here? What would you like me to do? 
I don't care. Hmm. Probably right. just be blunt. Mm. I so you're either lying to me then or you're being naive but you cannot know what I know about YouTube and how the world works and wonder why these things happen or be frustrated by them I, I, no no you, you tend to conflate anger with confusion no, no I didn't even say anger well you're, fr you like, you're frustrated which is okay, not really anger whatever. it's a little but, but you said you said I can't want you you said this on a stream about me earlier you're like but he keeps wondering why this is no I understand why it's happening me being angry does not mean I'm confused I okay then why I'm the reaction angry about I don't get it Explain it to me like I'm stupid because you just explained it to me and it still doesn't make sense because like it makes – they're YouTubers. They don't know you. You put out a thing about pedophilia and cuties. People's brains go, oh, I know what this is. It's a pedophile. And you're like, no, I'm more than that. But like mm -hmm. to the regular – you're saying – what you said to me is what I'm going to say to you, which I don't mind being misconstrued or misunderstood, but you mind. Why do you mind? I think that's – Well, I mean because like when it comes to – it's 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 frustrating to get uh, misconstrued over pedophilia. Like it's one thing to be like, oh, somebody's a fucking – shits his pants all day. <clears throat> there's, a, there's a difference between that – versus like oh this guy likes to fuck children you know what i mean like that's the that's the part where it gets like um that's the part where where it gets a little suspicious like a character from among us you know what i mean it's a different experience especially as a man getting called a pedophile or uh, you know people i don't know this is might be very anecdotal for me which is what anecdotal means obviously but um <laughs> I like I I'm a man and like I consider myself a man right like that's just the way that I you know that's, that's I guess that's my value system almost to some extent and what that means is like one thing like that men tend to identify with is that they'll they will they'll cause harm to people who like harm children and I know that a pedophile isn't necessarily somebody who does that I know that there's a difference between that and a child molester but most people don't understand the difference between so and so when you call me that it makes me like that's a, that's a that's a call to violence and it's very frustrating you know so um maybe that's possibly why he gets so frustrated about this situation you know i wonder i wonder if he regrets the way that he talked about it though uh in a way that's like takes any level of like self accountability because you should know not to make those jokes especially as an adult at some point you know well. I think that's not true. I think you do mind. And I think that you repress your anger by the statement, human's gonna human. So anytime you start to get angry, you zoom out to this cosmic lens where you say, well, we're just evolved animals to blah, 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 blah. Yes. I can see from an evolutionary perspective, if I were a scientist studying humans or an yes. alien that landed here millions of years from now and I was looking at the bones of myself and the people talking shit about me on YouTube, then I would be able to understand their evolutionary reasons for doing so. Totally. But I'm just me. I'm just me. I'm just in this body with these feelings. And like, I think that's a very dishonest, disingenuous way to engage with your feelings. Yeah, but the problem here, Mr. Girl, is you don't know, even know how you feel because <laughs> you couldn't answer that question before. How do you feel? I don't know. How do you know if you're upset? How are you? Or how are you doing? How are you doing? I don't know. You know what I mean? It's very weird. You know, because I feel like that's a very weirdly cosmic, uh, maybe not cosmic is the right way, but you know, very like, woke perspective. Like you can't even know how you're feeling. Like, how are you doing? I don't know. I can never know how I'm doing. You know what I mean? Okay. Interesting. I think clearly I it's annoying saying. when people misconstrue you no, loudly I think, to an audience I, of millions think, of people. And to say that the only way you can be angered by that is if you're also confused. He seems to be like getting like actually this is, this is like a calm heat like a calm heated. I wonder if this guy has like anger problems. That's not an insult. I just genuinely wonder because that's that's like a I feel like that's part of like being an angry person is like um regret or or suppressing your anger. Um because that's like what you're taught when you're an angry person. Like to suppress your anger first, you know? Is How am I? Annoying. I can't answer that question, bro. I can never know. But I don't understand. think, I don't think I you can say that. You, you can't. Okay. I can. I can. No, you can't. I, you I can, can do whatever I can you say want. You can that do whatever I'm, you want. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I can. But listen. And so here's what I want to do. Sure, I want sure, to sure. say, I want to say, yes, I make provocative content mm -hmm. that is easily misunderstood, especially at first blush, especially by, uh, you know, people who aren't really paying attention. Like, I don't even think most. Is he? I wonder what he means by that, because like there's a difference between talking about a controversial, we'll say provocative. There's a difference between talking about a provocative topic and being provocative. Right? There's ways to talk about nuanced topics without. Um, why did that go backwards? Oh, because of this. Anyway, <laughs> um, like I, I feel like I talk about controversial topics, but I wouldn't consider myself controversial. And so, if you're having an issue, you think that maybe like the way that you're trying to communicate your issue is a problem. Um, if people are constantly misconstruing it. I don't think that's an unreasonable criticism or potential. Dumb. I think he's a smart person. Yeah. I just think he didn't really care. Probably. Uh, it's content, and then I can I also say, despite making this Probably provocative content that is easily that. misunderstood um, or e easily understood and still provocative. And could, even if you knew what I was saying about cuties, that I'm like, no, I really do think they're hot guys. Like that. That's also just going to make something. Well, they're mad. not hot it's guys. Fine. They're hot children. I'm just kidding.
Stop. Stop it. Stop. Okay? Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> That's that making people mad. Um Don't click can that. be part of what You're gonna I'm make me a one. Don't do that. Doing an inevitable part of what I'm doing, or even an intentional part to provoke an emotional response, and it can also still bother me. Yes, I agree with you there. I do think so. Okay. I'm just saying to the degree in which it bothers you, I find that interesting because I don't, I don't, look, I've accepted when I came back to YouTube, I did try really hard to radically accept because it was so hard in the beginning, not understanding why people were misunderstanding me or why my whole community was turning on me. And then I realized like, oh my gosh, they literally don't, they cannot not do that. Like they cannot not hear you and think Mr. Gold might be a pedophile. And it's, it's what their bubble has informed them. It's what tools they have to examine you with. Yes. So, right. So, so, so right, like so how, if I'm, yeah. If I'm, I'm attacking people's definition of pedophile and I'm right. saying, with path pedophile, school shooter, all these topics, I'm saying you're a lot closer to the definition that you're using than you think. Of what? Of pedophile. I'm with cuties. I'm saying I, it's not a new, it's not weird for me to look at these girls twerking and think like, yeah, they're kind of hot. Okay. That's a very normal human response. A lot of people are going to have that. Interesting. I I will say that is very close to saying humans going to human though, which is something you just criticized her for doing response and i'm sure. saying i know i know you i know you're gonna have that response because and i'm and I'm, I'm i'm saying like i'm a pervert but so are you and that and so i know that that's going to cause a know. provoke an emotional response to people what bothers me um, is that when there's an additional layer of like that's such a that's that that's such a challenging idea that i think maybe you're just joking i just don't think you mean anything you're saying i guess i have to th i don't think i've i didn't watch cuties um, that's a lot to take in. <laughs> that's a lot to take in. Uh, I'm very uncomfortable with it. Uh, hopefully I don't lose this game because of how uncomfortable I am. <gasps> you mother fricker, dude. I almost said you monkey fucker because we're playing balloons with monkeys. How funny is that? It's not really funny. It's just silly. Um, I really have to think about that <clears throat> so because i want to be charitable to understand where he's coming from even if i disagree <sighs> okay so what it sounds like he's saying is that he watched cuties and there was an unintentional probably undesirable feeling of getting of some level of attraction or maybe the attraction is like too loaded some level of like oh that's a tra that man, i guess attraction is the word you want to use where you're saying like oh that that's like kind of sexy but it's not something he actively thinks it's more of like an intrusive thought um well okay so somebody said didn't she say something like that papa like a person might be attracted to a 16 physically but they should have a mental awareness not to act on it like yeah sure i mean there's a difference between 16 year olds and like 10 year olds i think the, the girls and cuties are like 10 years old so like it's there's a difference between looking at a 16 year old and thinking that like they're of legal age and being like oh that's attractive because they're like post pubescent i guess you'd say i um, and saying like oh i'm not into that because like so, like it's wrong because you understand why it's wrong but i guess fundamentally yeah i guess it's the same Maybe you think he's talking about sexualizing children. Maybe, maybe like in the sense where like they put sexualized clothing on them, which makes them appear more adult and sexual or or sexy. In that context, like it's a subconscious thought. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I. <sighs> this is very uncomfortable. Like to think, to think about. Um. I could see why people would look at that and go like, "Oh, this is gross." Because even if that's a true experience people have, which I don't really know that I agree with that. Um, I don't think that anybody thinks about it in that way. So like, let's say somebody looked like a fucking kid and like, oh, that's sexy. If, like they had that intrusive thought. I don't think that they would be like, yeah, it's just like a normal human thing. Most people would be like afraid of that thought. And they'd be like, oh, you know, I, th I would imagine. Um... Okay, let's continue. This is a lot of information to take in. Or you made a rap song that was a joke, so now I think everything you say is a joke. So now I now I'm not even going to engage with what you're saying. So that was what I was will say though. I heard the rap song, at least part of it on TikTok. It wasn't really bad. Like I'm I'm wondering why he doesn't make rap. 
because it wasn't bad. The song itself was decent. I mean, the lyrics were a little sussy, but the song itself was decent. <laughs> for me, about your video, about like whether or not I'm I'm like an actor playing a character named Mr. Girl is very irritating to me. And it is not. Uh, I'm not. I am not intentionally. So well, that, okay. So what I will say is that if you have like if your biggest viewed piece of content, which is, and I guess on a personal level with Britney, like she doesn't get to use this defense, but. I guess generally speaking, if your biggest piece of content is a song about like jokingly saying you'd fuck kids, I could see why people would think you're joking most of the time if they're not educated on you. Maybe you can't apply that to Britney, but like I think that generally you can make that application. It's not unfair. Like that's the way you put yourself out, and it's the most viral way you put yourself out. And you know, the, the, you know, within context, you might just be making a joke and like a criticism on 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 your, on your uh, or you might be making a joke that's supposed to. Um, Basically, if people are gonna make, if people are gonna call me a pedophile, I'm gonna make a joking song about how I am, you know. But most people probably, I mean, I watched it without any context. I'm like, this has to be not real or serious because, like, why would you? Obviously, um, but I, I imagine people are very sensitive to it, <clears throat> so that their first uh, interpretation might be like, oh, I guess this guy's like always joking, or he's this guy's a pedophile or something in that way. But okay, that's something I'm, I'm not even trying to do. And so again, I understand why I get why people have that reaction. But it still makes me angry. A lot of things that make me angry, I, 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 it's not, I'm not bewildered. Okay. I'm just pissed off. Okay, so I can relate to that, and I can definitely see that. I guess I just don't understand. Yeah, but then you wiggle out of being angry, and I don't know why you do. Why, I guess I do know because, why you do that because you don't like being not, angry. Well, kind of, but not really. Sort of. It depends. I don't want to be irrational, and I don't want to be. I want to acknowledge my feelings and I want to put them where they belong and I don't want to become sort of like, I don't want life to pull me forward. I want to pull life forward. And so the differences in how I've learned to do that is by honestly understanding why people do what they do. So I don't have to run into this problem of really feeling lost in the world. Because to be honest, everything's pretty good when you realize like, oh, humans are just going to do what they're going to do because it makes sense to them. So then you can guide them, slow them down, remind them, hey, you can make take different decisions. But I also can't be upset when things go the way they go because people have the right to be who they are. If, no, you can be upset. Being, yes. up, being upset okay. with somebody doesn't me, mean they don't have the right to be who they are. No, what are you I agree. About? No, no. I agree with what you're saying. Let me rephrase. I, Brittany, okay. because I yeah. don't see it benefiting me, will allow my frustrations with people to last a certain amount of time and when i'm done with it i'm done it just doesn't last as long now i'm so frustrated it just doesn't last because you don't long. think it benefits you you tamp right. down your anger and to me that no, I, I, feel it. I, I feel it i examine it and i put it where it belongs it. i process yeah. it so I think, yes i think that's horse shit i well i just don't i just don't think i think you think you have to wallow in it for the rest of your life you're not a you're not like a star from the 80s who's like dramatic on stage you can like let go of your feelings of frustration it's not that important. i don't think you can i i, I, I don't well, you can. I mean, as learning to process situations and getting through, working through your anger is, it's part of um, processing your anger and, and your issues is part of like being, a, is a, it's a good part of being a human. You need to or you're going to be miserable. You know, sometimes like, yeah, you have to kind of let go or work through your frustrations and, um, and anger is in order to be a happier person. Like when I got banned off TikTok, like, you know, I sat there and they're, they're you know, I could sit there and be pissed off all I want, but at the end of the day, you look at it through the most positive lens. You're like, okay, this is what happened. This is why it happened. And maybe things should be, you know, maybe society could be better when it, because I, I mean, I got banned. I don't think I deserve to be banned. I do think I deserve a punishment though. But, you know, at the end of the day, you're like, okay, well, here's what I did wrong. And you just kind of deal with it and you do the best that you can to move through it. And you're like, okay, here's what I could do better to improve. Uh, and when it comes to the uh, interaction with the world, um, you know, that's all you can really do. And, you know, at this point, when you do something stupid, you kind of have to work backwards and, and get people to be like, you know, you have to work backwards <laughs> and get people to, you kind of have, you really never live it down. That's just the reality of life. His, obviously, his cancellation, I guess you call it, was much bigger than mine, though. Uh, or more serious, because, like, uh, you know, uh, people perceiving him as a legitimate pedophile is pretty crazy. I don't understand how you haven't done that. Have you never been mad one day and not mad? Why was I banned? It wasn't because I was just doing edgy jokes. It was because like my edgy jokes weren't um, like they weren't well intended anymore. I've always done edgy jokes. I was a very big commentator on TikTok, probably the biggest and most respected uh, for a while, um, like two and a half mil. <clears throat> um, and I think that it wasn't just the content I was making. It was the expectation of me to be a better person because like I people expected more from me. I wasn't just some dumb fuck making jokes like I was somebody that was doing commentary. So people felt betrayed when I when I, um, you know, shifted and made some like jokes that were inappropriate. The next, bam. Not because I chose to not be mad, no. Well, you work through it. So you choose to work through the feelings. You put them where they belong. And so you're not mad anymore. There's nothing to be mad yeah, about. Yeah, I don't try to put my feelings places. And I'm saying that one of the mechanisms you seem to use when you put your anger into a different place is that you bring up this cosmic 
Yes, the macro and the micro Multi- and the balance of both allows us to live life. So we're not going crazy, Max. Like I was going in my 20s because I thought I'd- Yeah, I just started changing my content before I got banned. Yeah, but it is what it is. A lot of it boiled down to more than anything else. The They changed TikTok so that they were more sensitive to reports. And a lot of my older videos had like a lot of reports on them, but like they didn't have, they didn't hit the threshold to get instantly taken down. So uh, what happens is like your video gets taken down, you can put it up for review, but like 30 of my videos literally got put taken down instantly in that one moment. And then that's how my account got banned. And I was able to log into my account still, but it was banned. It was weird, which is why I know that like 30 of my old videos from like six months ago uh, or like several months old, three to six months, even more than that, even um, had gotten taken down. So that was kind of like the, the issue I had. I had to save the world, and okay. I thought the world revolved around my stupid, like, narky brain, but obviously it doesn't. So I'm, I'm pointing out that if you look at when you switch from the micro to the macro, it is yeah. often when you're uncomfortable with the micro. And a lot of new age people do this when they well, get angry. Wrong? And the, when they get angry and they feel some kind of uh, gross, you know, guttural, lower life form feeling like anger, which requires conflict, which is really ugly and difficult. I love and they switch chaos. to, like, they switch to, ah, oh, but can't you just smell the stars? And I feel like, that. Oh, okay. okay, but here's. Yeah, the- I don't think that's what she's doing, though. I think that it's one of those things where sometimes you just have to acknowledge that this is the way the world is, and like, yeah, you can change it through advocacy, but you kind of have to live within the rules to an extent. So, like, you know, sometimes you have to be like, well, you know, it think like it's literally the same thing as you know, it is what it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the same thing as a uh, is what it is, man. Sometimes that's just that. Sometimes that's just it. Sometimes it literally is what it is. You know. Yeah. So then. But there's so a logic to it. Running, a... But to me, to me, that's you running away from your feelings. Okay, not you, not I think processing twos, them. I think people who are in bubbles can think they've solved their emotional things. And also, I think I'm much more comfortable acknowledging. Like, I don't mind acknowledging that I have frustration, but you should have seen me, Max, literally years ago. I had serious anger issues. Punching walls, punching cars, kicking things, like really upset, right? What are you, a white kid named Kyle? So I, I can say I, I don't have the issues the way that they presented before. Just like with the borderline, like you can't say you can't recover. Recovery is a part of life. People recover all the time. I'm a recovered angry person, right? But there's I don't a, agree. I don't agree. You, you. don't believe people intense. can recover? I don't think you can recover from being angry. I think anger is a feeling that is a transient feeling and also a low level hum that, that people feel throughout their lives. And I think that you are an incredibly angry person and that by switching to a macro lens of the universe whenever you feel angry you're not actually dealing with your anger i think you're just repressing it so i think you are an intensely angry repressed person i think that would be i mean, maybe you don't i mean that's i mean would you call it repression i guess it depends on how you process it being like you know what this is the way things are because like from my experience like sometimes I'm like yeah this is just the way things are it is what it is i'll give you like a for instance i remember one time my dog um like ate all my food you know, and I was like really pissed because I wanted to eat it. And I was like, well, the dogs are going to dog. You know what I mean? Like sometimes, you know, I got to be better about leaving my food out of the reach of a dog because it's a dumb fucking asshole. It's going to eat my food. It doesn't give a shit about me. That doesn't mean I'm repressing it. I know it's a weird, uh, I know it's a weird uh, thing to think about like that. But, you know, sometimes it's just like, okay, these are the way things are. And like, okay, like it is what it is. Like, that's okay. You know, um, like when my, like for instance, my wife, she always touches my ass. And like, not in a bad way either, but I'm just very sensitive to being touched. Um, it makes me very uncomfortable, but you no, know, she does it. And like, don't, don't sit here and, and if you swear to God, if everybody's like, oh, it's sexual assault, you just fucking jump off, um, jump off your bed and onto a nice cushioned amount of pillows. Not everything needs to be fucking traumatic. She just likes to touch my butt and sometimes I'm okay with it. And sometimes like I'm not. Anyway, I don't get like, I get like annoyed, but I'm like, okay, she just like, she just likes to be playful. And like, she likes to be flirty with me. Uh, that doesn't make me repress my anger. I don't have like this seething rage. It's just like, okay, I know how she is. And like, she's not trying to make me uncomfortable. She's just trying to like touch my booty. You know, and sometimes I do like it. Sometimes I like, sometimes I'll like, I'll lay in bed and she'll rub my butt. And sometimes she'll like touch my butt in, a, in another instance and I'm like upset about it, you know? But it's okay. I think we're going to be okay. Be accurate when I was years ago old, because I think there was a time when I was. And I'm saying, I believe- I that's now. I, I, I think disagree. That right now. Well, that is my official assessment of you, having spoken to you for the last two hours and 14 minutes. Has it really been that long? It's been well, really nice. Well, um, it was two hours and 10 minutes. Okay. I think that's fine, though, if you see me that way. I don't think it's accurate, but I don't think it wasn't, I think it was accurate at one point in my life, and I think, I can see where you are coming from. I'm not denying that I'm not angry or that I don't feel anger. I'm a, I'm, I'm not agreeing with the level in which I feel or interact with anger according to what you're making it sound like because sure. I have something to compare it to I know I'm different than the Britney that was before so I'm like oh I'm less angry so I'm okay with like but I, I, I don't, don't think, I think you're more controlled I don't think you're less angry what 
I think I'm less angry and I'm more controlled. I mean, listen, he, he, Mr. Girl seems to be a very smart guy. I just feel like sometimes he's a little bit, presum uh, a little bit presumptuous here. Like a little, I mean, somebody with anger problems doesn't necessarily, well, you can get less angry. They might have a, somebody with anger problems will usually react in a disproportionate way to justifiable ways to get angry. Like, it's not like angry people don't have, like, a reason to get angry in the first place. But they'll have a disproportionate reaction. So, the first thing you have to do when you're an angry person, or you have anger problems, is, like, you need to process it better. You have to process it almost in a way where you have a, you still have a disproportionate response. But your disproportionate response is under rather than over. And then you have to process from there. Because you have to kind of evaluate the way that you're angry versus like what the person did, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's not like repression as much as it is. It's just going through the correct motions in order to get where you need to go. So it's like weird. Um, I just don't agree with his assessment with anger. Well, all the ways you describe for how to be less angry seem to involve like distracting yourself or yeah. w choosing to not think about it. Well, what about the radical acceptance part, right? That's a huge you kinda part have to, of it. You kind of have to breathe through it <laughs> and then you have to process it. You know? yeah. Choosing to not think about that counts. It's choosing, well, that's just saying. No, no, is you it, don't just anger, it anger, is a anger is a rejection of what's happening. Anger is when you're like, I don't like what's happening and it makes me right. feel very aggressive and angry towards it. So if you radically accept it, you're saying, well, I can't change how I feel in on my end of, I'll just change, uh, I can't change what's happening, so I'll just change my preferences so i'll just say just moving the goalposts you're just saying like well if i radically accept that this is what's happening then i don't have to feel anger because then i won't have that internal conflict about how i wish it weren't happening because right. it, it just is happening i hear you. It's, it's still just it's a way to douse your anger for sure i think to some extent it could look that way but i'm saying this is my thought process now my thought so the reason i'm not doing banana farms is because i'm trying to farm xp for um these four monkeys so that i can get the paragon monkeys of them so i have like stronger so i need 500k so if i if i put uh the farm monkeys in there right now like yeah they'll yield more but it'll also uh changed my xp distribution because there's a finite amount of xp distribution per level and it's based on how much money from each monkey you've spent so that's why i'm not doing it like that process is like yeah. i'll give an example something that makes me angry almost like instantly is when i find out people are cheating like in their relationships i just get angry and i'm like no yeah. see you're lying you're cheating it's right it's in the title cheating means now we've done something wrong because it wouldn't have been cheating if it would blah 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 blah, right and then people mm -hmm. come to me and they go but Brittany, do you think you know what should be done with cheaters i'm like well nothing honestly like i don't that's not my business because i'm angry that it's happening but i'm not really but i understand why people do it i've met people who like their whole life operates what, mean, what should be done with cheaters you know, because people always want a solution. If something's bad or if you're angry at something, people want a solution. And I'm saying the solution... But isn't the implication always murder? It just feels like people are constantly asking yeah. you, like, who you think should be killed. Absolutely. That's what we're thinking. Who should we deny rights to? And I'm saying we shouldn't be thinking this way. I'm saying instead we should think, how can we give people the most freedom, the most ability within the structure of a community and see how it goes? Okay. But I don't think the world... I think the world is defined the way it is because it's exactly what is happening. And then it will be better tomorrow and it will be different the next day. And it will always be what it's supposed to be because people are doing what people think they should be doing. This is the consequence of like freedom and people living their lives as you'll have chaos naturally because people will butt heads like look if you and I can't see each other humanize each other enough to get along right how do we expect the world to do it I mean I feel like we're doing it right now but maybe in some world like Max and I don't get along somehow and so it's just like that like I think life is this times a billion. So I can only be so angry. I can only be, I can be frustrated with you. I can say, Max, you're frustrating me so much, bro. Like, come on, let's go for it. But at the end of the day, I, how angry can I be at a man who's on his own journey? Like, and he's not involved. You're not in my life. Like, no offense. Like, nothing you right, do matters right. to me. Even if you made a whole video about yeah, me, I'd be like, cool, Max made a video is, about this me. Is, this is what I'm talking about. No, you're in denial is, that you think you're special you're and it saying, shouldn't matter. All, all, We're not special, Max. We're human. Get over it. It's not that yes, deep. Human's gonna hum human's gonna human. We're on a journey. It's, it's not that deep. Smell, the smell of the smell of the stars and the wind. I okay, understand. I think I'm understanding now what he's saying where he says that she just represses it. Because I was with her. Until she got to the point where uh, she's like, oh, I'd be upset, but you know, you're just a human. I think, okay, I understand. It's very hard to, I think it's a difficult concept to communicate. I think that's why it's taken me a while to understand what he's saying. I don't know if I agree, but I understand what he's saying based on what she just did. It's just hard to artic articulate and like tell other people what he's trying to say. Like it just, it does, it does feel like, um, they're instant. Like what I was ex explaining was like, you get angry because you're justified in it and then you have to cool down so that you could process it and you can like rationalize this and rationalize it and then you can generate a solution which a lot of times can be just like this is like when it came to people like you know falsely um calling me a pedophile for that joke that i made 
Um, it's like I process it. Like I get fucking angry and then I'm like, okay, I take a step back. I calm down. I process it. And my outcome is like, I can't really change what they have to say. I can, I can try to explain what people, it was, I was trying to make a joke targeting somebody who potentially did that thing. Um, <clears throat> and it was taken out of context. But then at the end of the day, you know, you come to the conclusion that people are very sensitive when it comes to conversations about pedophilia. And so you need to make sure that you speak very clearly and with like a lot of intent uh, and articulate yourself, if, especially if you want to have the most positive outcome of like educating people on things so that, you know, less child abuse comes from it. That's what I was saying. But I think what he's saying here is that she just gets angry at something and says, ah, oh, human's going to human, even if it's a behavior that she disagrees with rather than engaging with it in some capacity. I think that's what he's trying to say. Um, okay. What you're saying is that you're angry at me. Over what, and though? What can I be angry with you over? Criticizing you. Oh, I don't mind. I think it's nice. Accurately. I, uh, accurately mm, criticizing you. From your perspective. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that could make you angry. Do you think I'm frustrating to talk to? Uh, yes. You're, you're, you're very evasive, and that frustrates me. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. You do a lot of telling um, people who they are, though, so it's fun to evade it. I do a lot of telling people who they are? Yeah. Aren't you telling me who I am by saying that? He does do that a lot, though. He does tell people. He he, he uh, asserts a thing uh, onto people a lot. So that's true. More than most people do. Like that weird back off response was like, she's just like, yeah, you, you tell people that, what, like who they are basically as people a lot. And he's like, well, you're doing this to me now. And it's like, okay, but well, you know that there's a difference between the way that you do it versus other people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, We're twins. Yes, I... I do a lot of telling people who they are. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is normal. Joking. We all want to do it. We all want to tell people who they are and what they're doing. We would categorize them and be like, you're bad. I'm you're still trying good. to figure out like when he is and isn't joking and what is and isn't a joke. You know what I mean? Isn't it fun? And then we do it forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and our kids do it and their kids do it and then we just keep doing it. Do you think animals are a burden? Sometimes. Like pets? They can be. Like cats? Uh, I have a cat, and if she's a burden, she's my what favorite one. <laughs> she is sometimes, I guess, but not really. Like, my mom uh, recently found out I spent a pretty good amount of money on her, and my mom was like, oh, my gosh, Batsy, please get rid of your cat. And I know when she says that, she doesn't mean it because she loves my cat, but, like, I know what she's trying to say. She's trying to say, I can't believe you're taking on this burden for a cat, and I'm saying she's worth it. I love her. She is literally, like, so much. <coughs> Honestly, I'm kind of sad she's Agreed. not here I said to my mother the other day because the dog ate something it wasn't supposed to eat, and then she spent, like, $700 on it, and the dog has diabetes, and she spends, like, $100, like, oh, fucking every two weeks or something to get, like, that chip implanted in her. So and I'm just like, just, just let the dog die. Um, and she's like, no, I love the dog. The only difference is I'm not kidding. Kill the fucking dog. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Sleeping right there, and I refuse to interrupt her. But yeah, I love my yeah. cat. Do you love your cat? You seem to. Yeah. Yeah. I love them. I think everyone's kind of a burden. I think I've been a burden. I think friends are a burden. I think that's why I have a hierarchy of friends. I have boundaries. I have strict value systems for myself. Because I, I honestly have a habit of wanting to like be friends with a lot of people, but I don't have the energy or the spoons and I'll die. And I won't have enough time for myself if I give Me it to too. That's else. why I have so. like no friends. Because like, I don't really give enough energy to give a shit about people. Like it's nice to be friendly with people, but I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? I don't got time for that shit. It's gay. It's gay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I, I try to create balance, but points. balance is always oh. in flux. So I'm never perfectly <laughs> balanced all the time, but I'm like balanced in moments, and that's good enough for me. I don't expect perfection. Just an, you know, an uh, effort. You direction. know, at least. But when I'm not balanced, I just go downstairs and I yell at my brothers and I say, I'm not balanced. And I'm being a two right now. And then I yell and I feel my own feelings. And they go, Are you done? I'm like, Oh, I feel great now. Thank you. And then I it's interesting that she has this whole hierarchy system, but like her family's educated on it and stuff. So like everybody knows about it. It's like weird. She seems to really live this uh, system a lot. It's interesting. Which I guess that's a sign that she's not uh, just grifting. Just zen out. Like, the, you know what I'm saying? It's all in flux. The human condition's in flux. It's beautiful. But I think I think it helps to know that right. even I when you're in flux, the that there's sidewalk, like a, right? a goal at the end. Is that where they That go? you don't have to be see. like, when I was manic or crazy, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. There yeah. was no evidence of it. No bubble gave me the evidence that I was going to be okay because everyone told me I wasn't going to be okay. okay. So I found it on my own and I feel like it's a pretty good answer for someone like me who can't get the answer from a bubble you know or like from those bubbles i get my answer from my i guess my own because i live in a bubble too you know we all live in bubbles okay well, how am i gonna do this like okay you've gone in a really adventurous life you've got naked online i've got naked online like i did mine to see if i felt safe being naked and vulnerable why'd you do yours big dick i just, I felt like I just wanted to i guess uh i think i, I probably probably um 
pushing for like some kind of self acceptance and uh, just to for really? sexual gratification. Mm. So I-, I I feel like those are like very loaded answers. Like if somebody was like, "Why did you do?" I'd be like, "I just fucking want." Hey, I think I have a nice dick. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's what I would say. I think I have a nice dick. I want people to see my dick. I hope people agree with me. That that would be what I would say. It just seems like a lot. Um. So I'm just saying. Dude. I'm not an exhibitionist. I don't know if you know that, but I don't get any satisfaction from being watched. It actually does nothing for me. If anything, it kind of ruins it sometimes. But I'm a voyeur and I like to watch people. Oh, it's my favorite. Like watching people be people. It's my favorite, no matter what capacity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I think, I mean, I know I'm like fat, but I think I have a nice wiener. So I'm like, hey, you want to see my nice wiener? It's not big, but I, have, I think it's nice. I, I've always, I've gotten complimented on it. You know, it's cleanliness is a, is a factor. Um, you know, it's rigidity. <laughs> um. Would you say it's fair for him to tell her about herself given that she's a ranking system? I Well, I think it's fair for him to do that because they're having a conversation uh, about, you know, you know, really, a, I guess, a philosophical conversation. I think it's fine. I'm just saying it's still something that he does. So, But I know for me, like, I have a lot of vulnerabilities, or I used to, especially around my body and the way that it looked. So it started with, like, putting myself on Tumblr and being like, okay, this is it. And then eventually, recently, like, showing everything, Shit. even though I've been public. And- hey, Tumblr died with the removal of Tumblr porn, and you know it. Tons of times in public. It's not the same as the internet. The internet feels so much more real for some reason than in real life. Like, it's so strange to to realize that, but that was a really cool experience to realize, like, I almost took the internet more serious than my real life, which is kind of weird. You know? Have you ever been naked, like, at a parade in public or anything? No. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I've been naked in public a lot. How does the how is it for you? Like being on the internet, or something? I'd rather be naked in public. It feels safer to me than online. Interesting. That's the same to me, I guess. I I can uh yeah. I don't think I really feel okay. that much of a difference. I used to model for art classes, so I've been naked in front. Oh, of okay, that like makes more sense. Hundreds of times. Yeah. yeah so it yeah. reminds me of my friend. His name was James. He, they looked similar. Mm-hmm. James was very bad from- at his job. I used to work with him. He's the guy from earlier. I think it was in this conversation. I don't even know if it was in this video, but I talked about how I had to do work for him. Anyway. I mean, it's like when I'm in public and naked, other people are naked too. So it feels a lot like a group effort. And then when I'm naked alone, I just feel like everyone's watching me naked. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. But it's like safe in the literal sense, right? I'm not a sex worker on the street. I'm a sex worker in my house. That's like safe. So it's like logically safe. But it feels more vulnerable at the same time for me. I, I went to this uh, model party and this like 50 year old woman uh, laid across my lap. Incredible. Uh, for like a a group <laughs> picture, okay. people were drawing us. Okay. Yeah. And uh, models are, are are very intent on saying that modeling isn't sexual, but it, right. it is. I think it can be. Yeah, I think it is. I mean, if you're naked, I imagine it is going to be very sexual. <laughs> Not if you're in a. I'm planning on. Yeah, it is. I'm planning on uh, going to a nudist um, like thing, mm-hmm. and uh, I want to debate a nudist about whether nudism is sexual. Great. I think you should do that. I think it's a good conversation to explore. Um, I hmm. I wonder if nudism is sexual. What do we mean by sexual? What do we mean by it's being sexual? I wonder. I, I would have to ask that question. Um, do I think that being naked is inherently a sexual thing? No. Uh, relating... The, to the instincts of a psych or physiological process and activities connected with physical attraction or intimate physical attraction between adults. I guess it would be sexual in that context because people would be like, oh, it's the naked person is a sexual thing generally. I guess so. Don't find all sex- like nudity to be sexual, but I think it can be if you have a brain that's sexual. So I think yeah. context matters because I've met a lot of people who just like are genuinely, you know, oh, like on that lazy. asexual or slash low, like non-existent uh, drive spectrum. So they're yeah, interesting people. But yeah, I've been around nudity a lot in my life and I don't know. I'm, I have a pretty high sex drive. Sexual. So I think everything, I mean, even at Walmart, I turn everything sexual, everything <laughs> sexual to me. Like my brothers literally are like bringing up problems. I was like, probably. I honestly should have fucked more people by this time with how often my brain goes there. But okay. I haven't. I just express it in different ways. 32. I'll be 33 in less than a month. Wow, I look like shit. She looks so much better than I do for my age. <laughs> Wow, he looks better than me too. Fuck, bro, I'm 32. I'm gonna fucking, I really am a true one here. Congratulations, happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um. Interesting. I'm burning out. Okay. Wow. Fair. So, uh, I'm afraid of you, and I think that you're sort of a Nazi cult leader. Okay. That's fair. Are we being honest? Uh, Should that... I share my own? Am I gonna get a chance to share my honest thoughts too? You. Every every breath you take is a chance to share your honest thoughts. Okay, go ahead. Summarize how you feel about me. Okay. Um, I, I, uh, wait a minute. 
Shit, I, I do like you, and I, I think uh, you have good intentions, but I think that this... I think there's like a blind spot around Sorry. anger and around power, and uh, I, and I am concerned about what it what you're doing, but not that concerned about it, but kind of. I find it unnerving. Hmm. I find the uh, sexual sexual advances slash injections interjections um, a bit rapey and unnerving. I just don't like the whole rapey thing. Okay, all right. Power plays. Hmm. Maybe. And. Um, do you think it's a power play? I thought that she was just being flirtatious for fun. Is that how people perceive that kind of stuff? Or does he think it's a power play because that's a woman and like a man traditionally can't make sexual advantages in an unwanted capacity without getting called out? Is that what he's talking about? Hmm. I think you're hiding from your anger. And, uh... I think you're pretty hard on your he said that before well i know he i know he said that before i'm trying to explore what he means i just i still wouldn't consider that rapey yourself that, i think that 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 that, that ranting about the i think that ranting about the ones comes from you being very hard on yourself so i feel like if you mm. had more maybe yeah. kind of empathy or even sympathy for yourself then maybe you wouldn't uh feel like we need to exterminate the scum of society <laughs> again for the record do not want to exterminate anybody <laughs> very important yeah. okay Sure. Anything else? No. Okay. Um. I I I like you a lot. I like your work. I think that video chasing women, like that one, was really good. It was really powerful. You said a lot of inside thoughts outside. I was really moved by it. I really like this conversation, and I kind of hope that this means we get to talk more, or at least in another capacity. And yeah, I, I think we should stay in touch, of course. Yeah, that would be nice. Um. I, yeah, I don't have anything to say at this moment, but I think I, th I'm hopeful for the future. So cool. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. So am I. Good. I am glad. Um, what do we do I now? I mean, uh, hey, <laughs> it's just a phase. When I was 32, I wanted to kill all the homeless people too. <laughs> True. You know? Okay, good. I'm glad I can uh, look forward to something else, a different version of myself. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was um, getting... Yeah, well, let's just stay in touch, I and uh, you know, we'll talk uh, privately. But you know, if we uh, see any panels, any juicy panels or anything, uh, I'm not uh, do, 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 a group do, participant. Do, I'm not really a group player. I'm not really a team player. So no, no. I, I got out of it for a while, but I, I'm trying. I don't know. Starting so I think it'd be fun to do a panel. I just don't know how they work or how it works getting on a panel. Um, get back into it. I think I'm going to do a. <laughs> Another that one. That doesn't too. die, bro. That's great. Yeah, if, uh, I'm, I, I want to talk to you and me and uh, Steven. I think that would be, and maybe even Melina or like Sassy. a group would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. That would be interesting. Though I think it'd be better if we were all in person. That'd Get be even more fire. Like something about our energies mixing together would be perfect. Um, but I really liked this. I thought we did well together. Actually, I was I was a little nervous, but also excited, and I, I think it was really nice. Different right, than I, I imagined we, it would go too. So that was really exciting. I think we're the gist of it. Oh, they're almost done. Okay, I'll just see what else. I didn't scream at you. No, I think you did that on purpose. Uh, no, hmm. I, um, you didn't do the thing that makes me scream at people, which is, um, every time I said, I disagree with your opinion of yourself, you, you acknowledged what I said. And then you said, I, yeah, I just disagree with you. Uh, the thing that makes me scream at people is not when people won't agree with my definition of them. That would be insane. The thing that <laughs> okay. makes me scream at people is when people, people, um, pretend I didn't say it. Oh, or to pretend I said something I didn't say, or <laughs> pretend that um, I could choose to agree with their definitions. I, I think it's, I think it's mostly when people are, are, are asking me to change my what I think of them to match what they think of themselves, mm. which is what they think I'm doing. But I'm if somebody's just like, yeah, okay, I see, I see you think that about me. I think you're completely wrong. That doesn't that that's not triggering to me. Yeah, I tell Stephen I'm kind of boring that way. I don't tend to. I, I I like that. I don't. I don't want to be that. That's why I don't want to do panels. I don't want to be a. I just want to have a conversation. So like, I'm kind of glad yeah. it went that way, I guess. So I'm just, I'm happy for the connection. I'm very selfish. Like this was good for me. I feel pretty good. I hope it's good for you though. I won't know until after. Okay, cool. I like that. Well, DM me. I am absolutely, my DMs are open for you. Um, Mine are open for you too. Thanks. That makes me happy. I'm going to stay on stream for a little while and talk to my viewers. Uh, All right. Well, that was an interesting conversation. <laughs> that was very, um, that was a very, very interesting conversation. I enjoyed it.
Thank you so much for watching, guys. And another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone, go down to the links below where you can sub on my Patreon, which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub, if you have Amazon Prime, to subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.